GearWebsite.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com. It's 11.59 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. All right, welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. Come be live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and we talk about guns for like an hour. Or so. Uh, we were supposed to have uh, Sharon on tonight, but something must have come up. Something suddenly came up, and she wasn't able to join us, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the topic that I threw in the description of the video as a, as a uh, uh, potential topic for discussion. So we go live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and... I guess I don't need to open it this way. I'm talking and typing at the same time. And each night we have a different focus. On Mondays, it's motivation. It's how it's behind the scenes, how to 2A. Uh, I guess I don't need to open it this way. I'm talking. Oops. So tools, techniques, the software, the social platforms, networking with others, collaborations, that kind of stuff. That is the guts of 2A, right? We need that stuff. So I put some notes in here. Uh, we have basic versus advanced 2A. That's sort of the title tonight. And how bad are the fans? Because I got a lot of fans going. It's kind of gross in here right now, so I got a lot of fans going. Um, I'm going to talk about how to get into 2A. A couple of different ways to approach that one. Feel free to extrapolate on that however you'd like. How do you decide what to do? where to go and who to support. So let's do those in separate. Thanks for the feedback. How to decide what to do for 2A. Feel free to leave answers to any of these. Uh, it might be a little easier if you like preface the answer with a little bit of a question because it's going to get crazy with the lag, right? Um, so I'm just also throwing a lot of them down here. So, you know, maybe preference your answer with a, which one you're answering or something. If you can, I, I appreciate there's only 200 characters in the replies to YouTube here, but let's make do. So how do we decide where to go? So you can take that one a couple of different ways. As I was writing it, I knew that, you know, I was realizing there was more than one way to interpret this, these set of questions here. And then the third one in this set is how do you decide who to support in 2A? And of course, you could probably take that down to in in what way. Then once we get all done with that, I won't keep showering the chat with uh, questions here, but I'm going to use these to bring up on the screen as we talk about them. We'll get into some other stuff. What is advanced 2A? What directions need focus? Or I guess what directions in Second Amendment need focus. I thought of another one the other day. And I'll try to remember what it was if we're sitting here talking about it. And then what areas need advanced? Uh-oh, 22A. That's even more 2A than normal. So which areas need advanced 2A focus? And I threw Sharon's link in here just because you might as well. Actually, I think that's an interview with her. All right, so uh, thanks again for the feedback on audio. Let's see. If you are watching this, you're not a novice 2A. That's probably a good point. I can't imagine anybody watches this. I imagine some novices walk in on this and they're like, whoa, it's like a little kid drinking coffee or eating dark chocolate. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. What's up with this? I don't get it. You'll get it when you're a little bit older. Go away. Go back to playing your video games or whatever. So how do you decide what to do for 2 Oh, I guess that's my question. So this is be the first one. Wait, is this going to be the first one? No, this will be the first one. How do we get into, how does one get into 2A? There's this kid named Barbecue, makes videos. And Barbecue is making a series of uh, simple videos for people that are just getting into it and are scared to ask. 
So um, that's sort of on the basic side. How do you get into 2A? How does one get into 2A? So I was going to let Sharon riff on this. She's probably going to say things like, well, you got to join an organization for at least $30 or more per month. It's sort of like a caliber. If you're not paying more than $40 per year for your subscription, then you're not really paying for a good subscription. So the best way to know you're making, you're doing the best for 2A is the more you subscribe to a three-lever organization. Or maybe she wouldn't answer it that way. Um, so how would you answer? How does one get into 2A? Let's go down and see. I don't think anybody's even answering anything. Oh, no, nobody's answering anything, at least according to this. I'll refresh over here and let's go down and see. I don't think anybody's even answering. Nope, nobody's answering anything. All right, well, nobody's obligated to um, get exposed to it, then like it or not. So how do you get it? Oh, so in other words, I think Kingpin's saying, how would one get into it? Like they walked into it, like they got exposed to it. Then they either, are you saying then they chose to like it or not? Like they chose to be interested in it or not? I didn't think of it that one. I thought I was thinking, I guess I thought of that question as like, once someone has decided to be Second Amendment something, what do they do to get into it? You're saying... How did they come across it? So that's interesting. Um, when you think about how does somebody come across it, are our three are our three letter organizations out there the ones that do most of the work, really, a chunk of the work, at least a lot of visual work? Are they bringing new people to the fold? Are they introducing Second Amendment awareness to the mix, or are they fostering exactly like? nurturing the rift the rift between people i think they nurture the rift between people i can't think of any of the national level organizations that do anything to mend the rift or to educate and remove the differences between people or the the lack of knowledge between people none of them are doing a, any kind of consistent effort except for maybe nssf maybe nssf but you know me i don't really agree with everything nssf does um, so then this is definitely going to be weird with the lag. So this is going to be an effort in keeping up with the life. This one might not be that interesting as a podcast, but you know what? I don't get that much feedback. I do get a lot of views and listens to the podcast, but people on podcasts either don't care to go back and leave comments or they're just not accustomed to it. Maybe they don't log in. You know, I don't know how that works. Maybe they just hork the audios off of there and they don't have to log in. So there's no way they can leave comments. Which, you know, you're delete and it's free. It's legal to do that. I don't care. It doesn't cost us nothing to put the podcast up other than time. So we'll keep doing it because we're archiving the data. But um, without feedback, we just assume we're leaving it on a shelf, right? There's no way to know if someone's participating with it unless you get feedback. Um, so I guess I'm going to kind of focus this one on the live and not worry too much about it. Uh, so Woods is saying, decide... Be okay with your role, meaning okay with helping out, even if it's not a whole show. Jump on panels, et cetera, write questions. So what Woods is talking about is what he does. So I think, uh, or what he, his end of it, I don't know what you're saying. How did, I don't know if we're talking about this one. See, that's going to be the feedback thing. Or at least he's looking at it from YouTube-centric type of thing, things we can do on YouTube for sure. Well, some things to do on YouTube for sure. Uh, let's see. There is never one person who knows all the good places and sources in my list of sites, channels, podcasts, and books continues to grow. It has to be manicured, I think. You're right. It's difficult to have. Well, no one can know everything because things change, is I think what you're saying there. And Or if you're not, you're just saying it grows because you discover stuff. Then you're right. One person has only amount, you know, they, have, they live on a timeline. So one person can typically experience one thing at a time or, you know, a couple of things at a time maximum. And they can only do that for a finite set of time, right? Then they have to take a rest or sleep or something. So having that allocated to a group or having that facilitated by a committee, you know, a group of people is probably the way to do that. And then having a list that just grows. 
is interesting. That's an archiving type of list, you know, then that can be used to to discover and learn. But uh, having a list that's useful, having a list that's current would be something separate. And it wouldn't include everything that's come and gone. And that would, neither, neither one of those is ideal. We need both because if you don't know what's come and gone, then you're wasting your time redoing stuff that is, you know, that everybody did, well, that has already proven itself to not be effective. Um, and if you knew what had already come and you were willing to try something similar, at least you would know from the past, maybe to change your project just a little bit or something to uh, not be exactly what didn't work before. Or if it's something worked before, I guess we pretty much know the stuff that works before, but not always. Uh, let's see. So then Kingpin said, get exposed to it, then like it or not, which I think we talked about. Pian Wood or Woods is saying, start with to a talk to your friends and family to start so realistically do a lot of people do that i know i tried occasionally over the years but you know then you're just that guy like oh that's the kid who always talks about that or that's the old guy that always talks about that or that's the lady that always talks about that i mean you can there's nothing wrong with it i think if they're going to participate in it then right on but if they're not going to participate on it then they should know that you're like not fooling around but i don't know bugging somebody about it then it just become is it is, i think my thing with my concern would be is that there is does it become a danger of being like that's his thing you know like it's not important it's just his thing and that would be my thing because i'm used to being the kid so i don't know maybe that doesn't happen so much in everybody in all circumstances john brown is out there good evening uh replies on the daily gun show channel Oh, that was a good idea. So DJ is suggesting since we broadcast this to two channels, put the replies to one of them or the current one or something. That would have been a good way to do it. I should have said something like that. I'll think of that. I'll try to think of that next time. And this time, I can't tell from this end which side the comments are coming up on, but uh, Woods is saying he wrote stuff on the other channel. Yeah, right on. Uh, no, I can't, I'm checking both chats. They both come into here. So, and I don't know. I can tell if you're on Twitch because it's purple, but they're both just YouTube icons over here. I guess I could technically compare every single comment, and if it doesn't show up over here in the right, oh, you're not looking at my screen. If it doesn't show up on the chat I'm looking at over on the right there, where I would normally have a poll going, but I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I'm not a robot. Um, so can you check that? Yeah, I mean, I'm checking both chats, like I say. Um, Kingpin is saying... As far as 2A and not just guns, I think you need to understand there's a difference. When do, that's a good thing too. And I wonder, is the, when do you know there's a difference between 2A and guns? Maybe it depends on how you get into guns or something. I suspect somebody who's like 30 years old plus and buys their first handgun understands what the Second Amendment's all about. Somebody who's six and wants a gun because their big sister's got one, you know, that they may know what the Second Amendment's about, but they're a little kid. So, you know what I'm saying? They don't have to know what the Second Amendment's about yet. So that's a good question. Um, I'm wondering when you learn there's a difference. Uh, then you said, Kingpin says, I think you need to understand there's a difference wonder if the need part is in there i'm always question that always makes my devil's advocate radar go up <clears throat> so i know what you mean but it's tough to make somebody care so that makes me think what can we do to create awareness so now people go oh i can see why they think that's so fundamental and i do too now now i think it's fundamental also what the hell is this string that's over here What is this thing on? Oh, I got a whole nother robot arm over here. I didn't even know that. What's on it? Oh, nothing. Oh, I remember now. You know what I got on this robot arm? I totally forgot about this. See if you know what this is. Who knows what this thing is? It's not a, it's not a spider. Kind of looks like a little spider. What do you think this thing is? Anybody know what this thing is? Just a side topic completely, since I just 
figured out there's a giant spring from a robot arm in the screen. Um, I agree with DJ. No one who is good at 2A isn't something you are. Is it going I agree with DJ. No one who is good at 2A isn't something you're ever going to master. No, I don't get. You mean you're not going to be able to master knowing who's good at 2A? Or being good at 2A isn't something you're going to master? I think you can master being good at 2A. John Brown says, call your representatives. Yeah, I mean, seriously, that's the act, that's the... Is that the like the building block of action? Like everything is to encourage people to do that, right? Um, and you, when people say call, I'm going to say you can call and say, "Here's my opinion on this thing." You know, I'm observing, and this is my opinion on the thing. But you're also allowed to call them and say, "When can I make an appointment to talk to them about something I think is important?" Or when can I talk to her about up you know, teaching her why this is important to so many of us. And I'm sick of you keep saying this and that and the other thing about it on TV. So I, when, when can we schedule an appointment so I can talk to her? There's that kind of call representatives too. And I don't think, I think you're allowed to bring people with you. Like it's probably a, something that if you get three or four people together to, uh, you know, make it bearable and actually doable, you know, getting to a, capital or something to meet them would be probably a pain in the butt uh let's see woods is saying i've expanded my 2a knowledge by a thousand but now i know what i don't know that's interesting and that's a problem a dilemma we have is whatever we are right mammals with a certain amount of brain spans or something and understanding that a lot of things get complex really quick but i think we do a pretty good job with like let's say driving or I don't know, pretty much anything, right? Like we do a pretty good job of figuring out where we're going to draw the line and, okay, we know enough about this. We don't have to be a master or maybe we feel like we are a master, even though we know there's a lot more to learn. We, uh, I don't know, I don't, I, firearms aren't the most dangerous thing we deal with. And we, you know, we deal with gasoline and barbecues, right? And I don't know, welders and stuff like that. Like there's all kinds of things that people deal with and nobody gets all concerned. Well, that's really making the table wiggle. All right. Is that making is that annoying? I guess I could turn this off. Um, it's annoying me, so I guess I should turn it off. But yeah, that makes me uh wonder why do we have to draw the line somewhere separate just because it's guns and second amendment, or are we allowed to be like, Yeah, I I know enough of it to, to do in my thing? Woods is saying, good answer to John, call your representatives, uh, and not just when guns are under attack. So now I'm questioning, do you mean like when they're getting, when they're like to say thank you for not attacking guns this time around? Or is it like, thank you for, you know, doing that bill to outlaw sugar or something like, you know, some other things? Because it's probably a good idea to have a relationship with a human being that represents you. To not just be the person who call, you know, I am the one who calls up about guns, you know, pro, pro or anti, you know, I'm calling up about guns and that's it. I think we're allowed to do that, but is that the best approach to having another interaction with another human? I mean, I'm not going to take on learning all about every other issue just so I can become potentially a better advocate. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll be that resource advocate, but I don't know if I want to be the jack of all trades and then let's make sure guns is included. Although that's probably an important thing to have, you know, somebody that's just the good time lobbyist who's always there helping out and doing things. I don't know if that's called a lobbyist, good time supporter of the politicians, but then does care so much about guns that guns are always on the table. I wouldn't want to volunteer for that or have make anybody want to volunteer for that. Hopefully we got somebody on our side that would want to do a job like that. Uh, very much listen to people who know. That's interesting. I think somebody always says you got two ears and two eyes and one mouth. I forget who keeps saying that. Somebody keeps saying that. Uh, talk to friends and family is something I do often. I'm good at it. 
that's the thing. Maybe it just depends on our families too and how often and that kind of thing. But um, and it's it must make a difference if you know it's not like I decided to get into guns one day. I mean, I just have been around guns my whole life, so my entire family has had a decision or made a drew their lines in the sand a million years ago. I got nothing to do with any of it. I'm just alive watching it all happen. But uh, nobody came to me and said, hey, what do you think about my position? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just there. So, and then there's no conversations. I guess, no, there's just no conversations like that. And I would have to create them. I'm not about to do that. Because then you become that person who brings everything around to guns all the time. And I really don't. Uh, most definitely, you need to curate your own information, seeking an endpoint. The manicure you up frequently, or well, if it might run dry, may be a distraction. I mean, like, yeah, so many things, right? Distraction, and um, I think is that called a distraction when there's just too many, yeah, I guess it's a distraction, yeah, too many uh, pieces of data to sift through. Uh, Ron's out there, good evening. Aaron's out there, good evening. The stale, boring, or repetitive stuff may surge again, so I revisit some things at interview those to check. And I don't know what you mean. YouTube, read articles in paper. See, this is definitely going to get weird with the lag, because now I don't know what this means. On YouTube, oh, oh, okay, now I get it. On YouTube, read articles in papers and magazines. So that must be replying to the how, maybe. Uh, the biggest 2A, what just saying, the biggest 2A thing to me is simple. Don't get overwhelmed, and the sky is not falling, usually. I don't know. That, that's, that's been a thing for a while, and I don't know what the new swell of people concerned about their rights and buying property and seeing the interaction between antis and gun owners for the first time as gun owners that'd be interesting um to see if they continue to go with that sky is falling constantly or if that'll get what's the word like path you know, i don't know if it'll be left behind is that the way to say it for like some new marketing or new new way of getting their attention this show is also live on here. If you aren't sub, you should be. Oh, so thanks for DJ for throwing a link. I never really think about that, but I do post this on both channels. I just assume everybody, because it says gun websites everywhere. I assume everybody knows that uh, on mo some days I, tra I post it on both channels on Fridays for sure. It's Wednesdays usually for the quiz. I guess I post it on both channels. Mondays I only post on the big channel for like, because I thought Sharon was going to be here, but uh Normally, the Monday is just over on the, the Daily Gun Show channel. So sorry if there is some confusion here. I'm seeing all the comments. Oh, I guess I'm not even screen sharing. But I'm looking at all the comments on StreamYard. They all funnel into one place. At least I think I'm seeing all the comments. If I'm missing some, I guess, give me a heads up. I guess I don't know how I would know if I'm missing them. But uh, like I said, I just they all show up as YouTube comments. They don't give me a differentiation between which channel they're from. Although when you're seeing them on the screen, you're probably seeing me pop up comments that aren't in your feed because they're coming from the other channel. So uh, a little bit confusing, but on the other hand, I'm not going to do everything simple so that everything is easy for babies because we don't want to be babies anymore, right? We want to be at advanced level. So, so I guess that's enough explaining it. Let's keep moving. So if you've always wanted, oh, if you've, if you have always walked into a store and walked out with the gun, then moved where waiting periods and infringements are, you start getting the 2A part. Okay. So if you've always walked into a store and walked out with a gun, then moved where waiting periods and infringements are. I got you understand. So in other words, if you've just done your business and never thought about it, and then you moved into where there's horrible infringements, atrocious infringements where they have waiting periods and permits to purchase and permits to possess and um what else do they have now they've restricted it until you're 21 and all the others 
oh man, they just took everybody who's 18 to 21 and made them aware of 2A really hard. Uh, at least the ones that wanted the gun or care about their own rights and uh, the lack of. I don't know what whisk means. Scratch head thing. I don't know what's happening now. Oh, maybe when I was wiggling the lamp or the, the spring around. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Not a whisk. It is the thing for scratching your head. So Edge seen me, showed me that thing one time in Texas. He had one. And then I was at a dollar store and I seen this cheesy version of it. So it's just a bunch of wires. But on the end of the wires, there's like a little weird plastic dot so that it doesn't stab you. So then each of those wires is just bent a little bit. So when you jam that thing up and down on top of your head, it itches all your scalp like a bunch of, like if somebody with really long nails came up and started itching your scalp, it's pretty handy. So it's like a robot is itching your scalp. Um, so yeah, pretty neat. And every once in a while you forget, you own, at least for me, I forget I own it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I own that thing. And then you wiggle it on your head and you're like, oh wow, it's amazing. I guess if you have like lice or some kind of horrible dandruff, it would be useful also. If you don't have one, I'd recommend getting one. There was one, it cost me $1, definitely worth it. Uh, let's see, most people have a problem, Kingpin is saying, most people have a problem knowing who are liars and surface cons, therefore they miss the honest people. And that's something that we just have, to, we just deal with that in life, right? Like you're gonna have the person who's those scenarios in school and then at your workplace, probably at some kind of club or sports, team or something if you have church or civic organizations there's going to be those kind of people so you know they we know that they're out there but i think you're right i think a lot of people come into something that's foundational and important to them and they're being they think it's important they know it's important i should say they've maybe they're awakening to the fact that others have always thought it's important or understood that it's important and they're 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 coming around to that understanding of others and then the first person they meet says, oh, yeah, here, brother, welcome. Mar let me open my arms and let me just uh, get 30 bucks from you. And then it takes you a couple of times before you figure out, oh, that's the equivalent of spam marketing. And they know that if they stand next to the entrance and had everybody on the back who's just experiencing this for the first time, it's real easy to get 10 bucks or 30 bucks from them. And then if they never talk to him again, who cares? Because there's a stream of millions of people coming in. If you get 30 bucks for millions of people at once, that's a pretty good scratch if you can make it. So that's one of those things. And you can not you can only make people aware that, hey, the 2A is the same as everywhere else, right? Like there's nothing else you can do except let people know, hey, there's there's nobody here that's that there, there's this is a perfect environment over here. There's still going to be that kind of stuff happening. And they change, right? The question is, here's a question for people that have been around the wheel, the, the merry-go-round a couple of times. When someone is a scoundrel or a circus clown or a liar, I call them the exploiters. Do you let them change their feathers or change their coat or whatever that's called? Do you let them, they say, oh, no, I'm not like that anymore. And all these other people think I'm so cool. And do you go, oh, okay, then you're good now, I guess. Or do you... Are you skeptical because are they just buttering all these people up for a big payoff? Maintaining curiosity helps in DJ saying maintaining curiosity helps in growing a person's idea and practice of 2A. Maintaining curiosity helps in growing a person's idea and practice of 2A. Hmm. I mean, I don't disagree. I didn't have Sharon because there's nothing to bring her out for. And yeah, if there's something to bring her out, I'll bring her in here. Oh, you mean that Sharon? No, I thought you meant screen Sharon. No, the real Sharon? I don't know. I got stood up. She might have something to do. I sent her in a link earlier and she said, cool. And maybe she's doing something, you know, she's living her life. Um, I haven't seen anything in the news, so I'm hoping it's uh, something enjoyable for her and nothing horrible but no i have no idea uh she's not here um woods 
Why, who I don't, I'll change the thumbnail and the stuff later so that it's not a bait and switch. Wood says, who I don't support any channel that is the sky is falling most of the time. YouTube centric. The thing is, there's, oh man, there's radio shows that are like that. And there's writers that are like that for sure. For sure. And the problem is, okay, so there's radio shows that talk to writers and writers that talk about what they said on the radio show. So I don't know where that little circle starts from, but that starts and happens, right? And then we get the YouTubers that sometimes go, hey, I'm talking to a radio station person. And here's what they said, which, and they're talking about what somebody said in an article. And then the article is talking about what somebody said on the radio station. So we've definitely got that. I don't know if that's an echo chamber or if that's some kind of cycle. I don't know what that's called. But we've got that like situation going. And whoa, I don't think you heard that. Did the dog hear that? Where is she? No, she's okay. Um, so I don't know if people figure that out or, you know what I mean? Do you see that happening or do you get twisted up in that and you figure out you're inside of, uh, inside of the vortex or something? Um, would the Santa support channels that try to support their, that try to support their effort? I don't support chills for the new gear. That is often nonsense. I think a lot of it too, is that's going to change. I think because there's a lot of subscriptions and stuff for like, cause I'm looking at all these newsletter things and there's a lot of newsletters and I don't know how the, some of the radio stations, I'm guessing they just have advertisers. So that's a whole different thing. But um, so, you know, would you call like a radio station that is, I don't know what to call that. Just echoing, like not a voice, but an echo would an echo right now. Sorry, echo, no mean to offend echo by any chance. Oh, there's Sharon. You got the link? Is it not working? Let me go. I guess I haven't checked Instagram again. I sent it over in uh, Instagram. Sorry, I can send it in email if that's easier. So if you're going to reboot, oh, so sorry. Now I see the other one. Be there in 15 minutes. So everybody's got 15 minutes. Uh, you had to endure me blabbing for 30, but they got everybody warmed up. Now we're going to talk about those same questions that now we'll have actual somebody to talk to about it. Um, I'm not going to remember everybody's specific thing, but I'll attempt to because I just said everything. We'll talk about one. How do you get into 2A? How does one get into 2A? Not necessarily an interview, how she got into 2A. Then how does one decide what to do for 2A? And then how do you decide where to go? Feel free to throw questions in here if you want to. Um, and then how do you decide who to support? We may go longer than an hour. So if you're going to drink some coffee, go ahead and drink some coffee. It's no big deal. Uh, if you have to call in tomorrow, it's no big deal. Just tell them that you listened to some 2A stuff last night. It's all good. If you're listening to this in the future, the people that showed up live are the ones uh, engineering your future for you. What you're about to hear was preordained by the people that were in here live. So right now I'm starring up a bunch of my questions because I always put my questions first. And then the people that showed up live are going to start asking all kinds of interesting questions. And then we're about to discuss them here. And they'll be focused on 2A. We'll probably solve a bunch of things. When you're listening to this in the future, 2A may be a thing of the past. Like we may have already solved it. So you're going to go, wait, what? What is this 2A they're even talking about? Because this is an issue that's been solved already. I'm way behind. So now I'm scrolling all the way back down. Minnesota issue. I already seen a Washington state. One state is fully against self defense. And then Woods advance. Oh, so somebody had said, Kim Gabriel, advance to a question mark. Tell me more. 
which says if it's to a see the patterns then that this attack on two is just like the last time and the time before it's not i mean there are those parts of it it's not staying that way they are bringing some new stuff um and panic buying is down in spite of 1808 though base rate is significantly higher than 10 years ago i agree at least i i gotta say that i haven't heard the uproar and the whatever that being said i don't listen to anybody new i don't think the people who are new that are around me are hanging out with gizzard and barbecues to people like that so i'm only hearing stuff from new people secondhand but I would say that normally during any kind of back and forth like this, we normally start hearing a lot more talk about whatever, buying stuff and what's available and that kind of thing. Boom. Here we go. All right. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, good, good. Apologies for running late. Um, date night with no, my no husband. <laughs> no, good. Right on. Well, I appreciate you cutting some time out. Um, <sighs> so no, uh, I caught... Hurry. I Go caught ahead. part of it. Um, first of all, on the whole situation with Minnesota and everything, that has been pushed for quite some time. Um, we saw it here you know, with 1639, uh, where it restricted uh, 18 to 20 year olds. I actually spoke with one of the state senators here. And this is, of course, on the state legislature, not the federal, where I asked him, I said, like, you realize you've just prevented all women who are 18 to 20 from being able to defend themselves. He's like, I don't care. I have that recorded from that particular Senator. This is not the first time that they're doing this. It won't be the last. Um, for the individuals who are in those particular states, when they start pushing the stuff, sorry for coming in hard. <laughs> Um, yeah, no worries, no problem. For the so for the individuals or, who are in states where they're pushing the whole thing with 18, ask them if when they talk about cognitive and everything else, they've been wanting to drop the vote down to 16. If they're dropping the vote down to 16, then 18 year olds are responsible enough to um, own a firearm and carry and things like that. Throw it back in their faces that way. Uh, not going to discuss the issues with uh, the gender and everything else. That's something else, completely different. Um, the issue right now is when you have 18, and 18, 19, and 20 year olds who are legal adults, legally obligated for contracts, legally obligated, and women now are subject to the draft. I don't believe they're having a sign in with selective service as of yet, but women are no longer exempt from the draft. That was a lawsuit decided by SOCUS, I want to say within the last six years. And if you purchase a car, you sign a contract, you're 18, you're obligated. Period. That's how it is. So if they do not want somebody to have the ability to defend themselves or defend their child, that's a whole other story. Got to ask them why and push back on why. And for the individuals who are saying that you need to call the police, myself and many others who have been doing this for a long time have cases documented going back. I mean, I've got cases going back to 18, 1860s that have stated that the individual does not have an expectation to be protected by the state, to be protected by the local government, to be protected by the government before the 14th Amendment was ratified. Now, I did finish reading an interesting book that I recommend anyone who is interested in your civil rights and in your Bill of Rights to read. This is a book put out by a Georgetown law professor by the name of Randy Barnett, and it's called The Origin and Meaning of the Second Amendment. Powerful book. 
This is a man who is one of the attorneys who has presented more than once to the Supreme Court. Very few lawyers have that ability to say. And I'll drop this in chat, and this will be the Goodreads list. Oops. As soon as Goodreads decides to let me copy and paste this. Um, let's see. G-Webs, you may have to post that over. Um, cause well, I never you have luck. To do on the YouTube, let me make you a, oh no, you're a, you're a mod. You should be able to, but yeah, I can but it doesn't, it. it gives me, it I gives do? me crap, um, for that. And if origin, I sign in, is it, is it yeah. origin and meaning of the second amendment? Yes. Or origin and meaning of the 14th amendment. It's letter and it's spirit. So Randy Barnett's a very interesting individual. Oh, the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment. So you have within our country, within the constitutional law and everything else, you have the antebellum constitution, and then you have our current constitution. The antebellum constitution is everything that preceded the Civil War. Everything after that is what our current constitution is with the major changes and things like that. Um... This is where we've added more than, uh, how many, 18 amendments that we've had in one, one released um, during that time frame, something like that. I could be wrong on my numbers. I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Um, the, yeah, uh, Randy Barnett, they're not going to censor him. They will never censor Randy Barnett. Same reason why they will never truly censor um uh, Justice Thomas, uh, with what was going on. He just doesn't want to deal with it. And the university, uh, I can't remember if he's at Georgetown or if he's at Washington University or was, um, sad day for those students, um, that they can't realize that they're going to, they would learn an incredible amount of information from the justice as lawyers and things like that. Uh, so I would strongly recommend this book. He brings up something very interesting that if anybody reads it, I would love to have a discussion on it. And it's something that Randy and the other author bring up towards the end. It's primarily Randy who's been writing this. He's got a very distinct style. Um, so very, very powerful book. Um, and they go into the differences in the language and the speeches and everything else that was done during the approval of this of uh, the 14th amendment now the 14th amendment is what codified the what we now call the bill of rights to the states not the 10th the 14th did stating that the states could not violate the basic human rights the basic rights the natural rights that the constitution had laid out at the federal level were also applied to the state level. The state could not use the 10th amendment as a go around on that. So the 14th is a very, very, very powerful um, amendment for citizens, for residents of the US. And, um, oh, the bunnies are getting fed. Uh, like I said, we just got home. Um, so this is one of the big things to read. So for somebody who wants to step up their game, there are specific books that you're going to want to read. This is one of them. It's a dry book. I'm not going to lie to you about that. It's, a, it's, it's written by a lawyer, primarily for those who have a comprehension and a knowledge of constitutional law. Reading up on constitutional law, reading up on not just what the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers say is key to understanding how to approach your state legislature to get specific laws overturned. Everyone talks about ERPOs and the extreme risk protection orders and the red flag laws. Those are not from the beginning of... Correct. Gabriel, you're right. Prior to the 14th, the Bill of Rights had only been, according to the courts, applied to the federal government. Um, and that's how they said it. And that case in particular for that thing, Dred Scott. This is the reason why Dred Scott is such a powerful thing, the dissent. The other thing to know the difference between the decision, the dissent, and dicta, these are each very specific legal terms on Supreme Court decisions. 
everyone talks about how you can't say fire in the theater. That was dicta, not decision nor dissent. It was is that a name of somebody or what is it? What it's is it it's a let me see if I can find the definition real quick. Um, I mean, is that a legal term or is that a name? Yes, of it's a very specific legal term, oh, and okay. um, uh, one of the best places and one of like, the locations. I believe it. I think I found it on the internet. It means you don't know Ditka. <laughs> no, wait, I think I found something wrong. I'm gonna keep looking. Do you know how to spell that? Yeah, D I C T A. I just dropped in the uh, the information, the link from. No, the plural of the dictum. Mm -hmm. The general usage of dictum is an authoritative or dogmatic statement in some context. So there's legal writing, church stuff. Yes. Dictum can have a specific meaning. Meaning. Mm hmm But when they are done at the time of a case, they are not specific. Um, they're not part of the actual legal decision. They can be cited in a subsequent decision put down by SOCUS, and that makes them law then. But if they're not cited in the decision, nor the dissent, or if they're cited in the dissent, that still does not make that law. And that's something people do need to be aware of. That's the reason why when you had people using the, uh, the case of, oh, I can't remember, it's not Slaughterhouse-Five, but this is the one where you had the individual who was an anti-war protester. And this is the one that came up with, you can't yell fire in a theater. Um, let's see. Now we're talking about some specifics to uh, understanding some fundamental uh, like constitutional, like I guess legal, but like constitutional um, things that uh, would apply to more than just one area, area of our life. So as yes. to be a second amendment advocate, you'd want to know why a human right is important and why the, yes. or how and like where it applies that the federal government has any right to touch us as humans mm -hmm. or our rights so that we can be more effective talking to politicians instead of saying, I want like, my property and I'd like you to leave my property alone, or I, I like my rights and I'd like you to leave my rights alone so that we're more articulate in our mm -hmm. reasons for leaving us alone, or is it a this different is, This reason? is part of this because you hear a lot of individuals say that the, first, the Second Amendment protects the first, the first protects everything else. And that's the reason why in the, the particular case is U.S. versus Schneck and U.S. Um, and that was they never talked about fires or theaters or false statements. This was whether or not an individual who is writing anti-war propaganda could be convicted under the Espionage Act. So where this comes into play now is Alex Jones. And the decision that just came down out of Texas saying that Alex Jones is guilty and should have his uh, rights removed, that his free speech does not matter. I'm sorry, free speech matters, period. It matters more for somebody who does not agree with you. I don't want to silence the antis. I want them to expose themselves to be able to counter their arguments counter everything that they say and yes gabriel you're right the dissent is not case law only the decision is case law but you have individuals who will quote the dissent in other cases yeah the holmes Co court is a horrific court when it comes to the supreme court decisions and the violations on what our natural rights are. So this is a court people need to be aware of. This is the court that uh, a lot of people have are using and are citing as like, well, it was decided during this time frame. It was decided during this time frame. 
yeah, that's fine, but it doesn't mean that it's constitutionally correct. Same reason why Dodd overturned the um, the Roe v. Wade and Casey. Both were it, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Ginsburg comes out and says that Roe was a was a bad decision. Yes, it was a crap decision. Um, are there anti's who would be just as vocal on our side? Um, straightened out and educated. Yes, there is. In fact, in Washington state, there is the woman who runs buyer firearms, um, uh, mountain forks, uh, firearms, sui uh, suicide using a firearm. Uh, and she changed her position after speaking and having a conversation with members such as myself and other individuals in Washington state. Um, an individual by the name of Brett Bass is very well known. And uh, he is part of Forefront Suicide Prevention. And conversations that she had with him changed her mind. She actually testified against the gun control bills this last legislative session. What was and her? Who was she again? Buyer Firearms. Buyer B E Y E R Firearms. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Oh, so and this wasn't so much like an anti. This was like a FUD or a gun. No, she was, she was an anti. Oh, she was on. Okay. She was an. She was on the anti side for a long time, and she ended up. Um, you don't have to. By the way, you don't have to address. I'm putting the yeah. stars next to some of these so that I don't okay. interrupt you. That's kind of how I sure. make my notes. I but know. I, just to kind of, I didn't want us to come in and be like, "Oh, here, start with you know, here's a bunch of questions." Because I know you've been watching the comments, and I was going to give some you a chance it, yes. to, yeah. to kind yeah. of just go out, you know, to, to explain what or to reply to some of those comments, I guess. Mm -hmm. But my goal tonight, I guess, just without having an actual um, agenda, is just to to maybe think about, and we've talked about, alluded to this in other conversations before. But if someone was interested in being a Second Amendment advocate. Mm -hmm. What tools could we refer them to, or what suggestions could we give them without making into Q and A? I mean, you know, people are free free to uh, make you know to ask questions and stuff. But just I was going to ask, like, from your experience, I know that a couple of people that I think we've talked off air about this. Like, a couple of people have approached this concept. Let's make a, a workshops or let's make um, instructions for people mm -hmm. who want to be activists. But I haven't seen that actually come through. So if someone was going to make like a some kind of a project to give new Second Amendment advocates resources or instruction, what would be included in that instruction? What do you think is important? I think the biggest thing is learning who, learning everything with uh, your state and county and your city. The Fed can do whatever they want. Honestly, we have more power at the state and the county level, and in some states on the city level, than you do at the federal level. Your vote is worth far more. Um, there are town halls that are done by every single state representative. And for the last two years, they have been, excuse me, popcorn. Um, last two years, uh, they were done online, except uh, some states, they still had them in public. And this is where it's more of a Q&A where the legislators will make a statement of what they're proud of and what they've gotten done. And people are able to ask questions. The questions are curated. Be aware of that. Um, and there only so many of them are done at a time. The other thing is what people also do need to realize, your representative at your state legislature for whatever district that you're in is required to see you required to talk to you. If you show up at your state capitol, and obviously you're polite, um, the best way I would say, show up in church clothes. Um, be respectful of what the process is. And like you're going to court, you're not going to show up in court in a ripped jeans, tank top, things like that. The judge will be pissed. And it's not that you're disrespecting them personally, you're disrespecting the position. Respect the position, have your talking points 
five minutes or less. When you make an appointment, say that you're in the district, say that you vote, you want to speak to your legislator, you want to speak to your, uh, your state senator or your state representative. You only want five minutes. And this is obviously during their session. When they're so not now, one five minute or have a few five minute points. Have a few five minute points that where you have certain topics where you know that um I have things where you can bring up points in the conversation. Keep it to five minutes. Keep as what they talk about in marketing, have this as an elevator as an elevator um sales push. Make your point, and I, I know. Apologize because usually I, I will drag on on some of these conversations. No, that's what I'm. That's what I created <laughs> this for. So that's yeah. I'm encouraging. Yeah. Um, you. Make your point in five minutes or less. I used to get uh, friends of mine used to say, "Do it in 28, 28 words. Make your point." And sometimes I would tell them, "It's not possible." X, Y, and Z. I need fifteen more words, and they're like, "Okay, what are the fifteen more words?" know your speech, know your information, and know how to approach it. If you know your representative is very, very, very anti-gun, approach it on, not on the 2 way side, approach it on the human rights side, on the natural rights side. Some of them might be more willing to look into this. Situation we had here in Washington and, State. And they may have never been, I just want to say, I, I, I don't think some of them have ever heard it from a different perspective. If they Correct. only get attacked head on, they're not used to a flank. They're not used to a... a Correct. Ask them, bring up, ask them why they're pushing the specific legislation when police have been here. Well, the example I can give you is here in Washington, the police have been handcuffed or hogtied, hobbled, what have you, however you want to do it. The police are not able to go on active pursuit unless it is a very, very specific rule set. Even if they see a crime being committed, this is outside of the whole thing that law enforcement has no duty or obligation to protect the individual. This is at the state level here in Washington, and I believe it's also in, in Colorado too right now, the police will be fined. The officer will be fined on what they can do on how they respond. Ask that legislator, find out, and I know this is going to be gruesome. You're going to have to do some dig diving within your local news. Find out how many women or how many people who are minorities, how many people who are part of a marginalized community have been beaten up have been stabbed, have been bludgeoned to death. And they've and if they happen to be in a domestic violence situation, how many of them have been told to not arm themselves, get the piece of paper that's the restraining order or the protective order, but they can't arm themselves because that'll be dangerous. One of the examples that I use recent that I've been using for a number of years, and this was right before 1639 was passed in Washington or right after. And this was a young woman who had a five-year-old child who was stabbed to death at the Seattle Armory. The Seattle Armory is next to the Seattle Space Needle. She stupidly broke her restraining order to meet with her ex-boyfriend, who was the father of her son about just like she wanted, supposedly she wanted to like put the final thing and end it. He followed her here to Washington state. This individual, when she got up to go to the bathroom, he realized that, so according to him, cause the, the attacker survived and has been prosecuted, um, said that he thought she was going to leave him. And in that particular situation, um, he proceeded to grab a knife and stabbed her over 20 times. This is in, and for anybody who is in the Pacific Northwest, the Seattle Armory is a place during the day, especially during the weekday prior to the lockdowns, was always busy. Because this is where tourists went. This is where you had individuals going to get food and things like that. And nobody 
stopped him from stabbing her. Caveat, the Seattle Armory is technically a federal gun-free zone. There is a school for homeless children on the north side of that campus and the north side of that building. Outside, they can't restrict it because you have to be able to walk from one location to another. Um, it's a public space and everything else. It was a Washington concealed pistol license holder who stopped the guy from stabbing other people. He wanted to suicide by cop. He was going to kill other people or attack other people. No cases like that in your home district, in your home area, in the big, in the bigger cities that you live in, in the states that you live in. Those are the cases that can be used. And you'll be called bloodthirsty and everything else. But the antis use the victims, the schools, the children who have been shot and murdered the same way. This is where being a two-way advocate is gets dirty. What's this, the sorry to interrupt? What's the term for the like unintended negative consequences? Is there a better term? Like I'm well, sure they say, oh, this this law is going to save lives, maybe, but then they don't hear the they don't pay attention to like what you're talking about when they remove firearms from 18 to 21 year olds. They delusionally think that way it's going to be out of the hands of criminals, but they don't think about the. It, literally, it is unintended consequences. Okay, that's the only thing I can think of. If anybody else can think of a better term and all better term for that, um, definitely do that. Uh, the other thing is, is that when you do unanticipated unanticipated consequences, same thing. Also, no, no, it was it was something like the something factors. I it had something more like a money. It was more like a clinical terminology i remember so maybe it was jake or somebody had mentioned it in the chat and I unforeseen consequence yeah same thing there there is not and i know what you're talking about and i can't remember collateral damage yeah but that's more like damn this was more like the uh the because you want this law like you want the dam to create power but you flooded the six towns to create the dam mm -hmm. and so anyway I, I didn't mean to interrupt there no some of some people use that as um unintended consequences and they also use it as justifiable that the uh the the needs of the many outweigh the few um mm -hmm. i had a nice little argument with some asshole well, well i guess me. somebody who has that position it's going to be tough to change their position but if the person just has the fantasy like oh i just want to help oh i didn't realize this my attempt to help was also going to offend or hurt Sometimes, there is a cascading effect on a lot of this right. stuff. The butterfly I'm effect. Saying, they're not all like against us. Some of them mm -hmm. are just like, oh, I'm for peace. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that what I was going to vote for here also bothered people. So no, I'm not going to do something that bothers people just because it might help somebody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I think some of them can be reasoned with. They're not all, if we assume they're all out to get us, then we're not going to have the correct messaging for those that aren't. Right. And the, the thing is, is that not all the Democrats are anti-gun. Many have to toe the line in order to get campaign funds. That is something that we saw here in Washington. Um, they were told that they were voting for the gun control bill or they would not receive any campaign financing for the upcoming election. Cost benefit analysis. That's one way to do it. Um, Gabrielle's got it. Um, and let's see. I think Barron said that, yeah, Pioneer Square. Pioneer Square is bad. Um, there's a reason why I still, we're still not going into the office at night where I work, um, because it's the third highest crime area in Seattle and it's by the university of Washington. Colleges have horrifically bad crime. Unfortunately, speaking of the crime and being able to run the notes, the, um, the Uniform Crime Report was changed out after 2020. It is extremely difficult to run the spreadsheets that you used to be able to for the previous uh, 30, 40 years from the 1970s. It's now a dynamic system and it's far, I find it, and as several others are noticing, it, it's extremely more difficult to get the hard data to show where the increases of the crime is, show everything else. So people are defaulting to the GVA. GVA, the gun violence, the gun violence 
Alliance Association website is a Reddit prankster who started that up and it's been used as Gun violence Alliance. What the GVA, this is the one that everybody quotes is okay. there's been 300 or 400 shootings or school shootings right. and things like that. That actually was established as a Reddit prankster okay. by a Reddit prankster. Um, he's, he decided that he was going to change the definitions that have been used since the 1970s, um, intentionally. Um, yeah, I hate the UCR change. It's, I have oh, not been man. able to run any data out after 2020. Do you um, know why it was changed though? Uh, you know, no idea. Like, I was, I, I was listening to a, a conversation with the guy who was the, head of the Texas Rangers, and he was mm -hmm. also tasked with all international crime for Texas, mm -hmm. the state of Texas, because the Rangers was basically the state police. So the way he explained it in this podcast interview um, is that, like you said, the original the FBI, basically, back in the day, whenever they first figured out, hey, we can start collecting data from all the states. So all mm -hmm. the states that want to participate, send us data. We're going to put it in spreadsheets and tell everybody and here's what the crimes are. And they only knew what crimes they had. Murder, burglary, car, yeah. you know, whatever crimes existed. There was like 20 of them or something. I don't know all the facts anymore or the specifics, but let's say there was 20 crimes. Well, and it stayed like that from the 30s or something until yeah. the 80s. And then people were like, you know what? There's computers now. There's mm -hmm. international crime. There's like a lot more crimes than these 20 crimes. And we're only participating with states that decide to participate. There's states and things that aren't even participating. So what do we do? There's computers now. So they came up in the 80s with a computer version of the Uniform Crime Report. And again, it was like, well, if you can afford to do it and, you know, it's not mandatory. So if you feel like it and then I'm assuming at 9-11, something must have happened where everybody got all upset about it and changed things. But 9-11 was the time frame. This was after that. Um, well, I'm just saying, but there's yeah. this slow progression because do we, you know, the, the thing is, do we want a state, a, a national government that has like instant access to every crime that's ever been committed, like, you know, has some kind of massive infrastructure that knows everything we're always doing and who's the, you know, accurate to every criminal out there? Or do we let sheriffs and people realize that somebody's a good kid and you know and she's going to do better later or this was just a reckless weekend you know that kind of thing and there's that right so this uniform crime report is there's so much nuance to it because the big thing that and i'm not justifying it or nothing i'm just saying there's some nuance to this because this guy's uh main thing and he's since quit so that he can shine more light on this is the international crimes that are coming up from the cartels oh, yeah. and you know some of the horrible stuff that happens with trafficking Mm -hmm. And the, the problem is that the way, because it's, it's a deep thing, but the way that the crime is reported, the way that it's categorized and, and thought of, like product, it's turned into a product, let's say, the way mm -hmm. that they deal with it requires them to find a criminal, create evidence, get that evidence together, and then blah, blah, blah. Well, crimes happen and the person's dead, right? Like they just do horrible things to people and mm -hmm. they're dead within hours. Yeah. So this and in their are they moved a mile south and they're across an international border. So we've got some really crazy issues. And that's one of these things that was supposed to change. Well, I guess you said it already started changing in 20. This guy said something. He alluded to it like changing in 2023 to some new version that everybody's yes, they're in the use. process of changing it over. That, that they're, sounds they're like great, but. That sounds like everybody knows everything that's ever happened to everybody or something. So it's a little bit different from what the, the UCR was just the reporting of the actual statistics of how many murders, how many rapes, how many assaults, how many batters. It did not have names or victims or things like that attached with it. It was just the raw data of what happened, where it happened, what was used, and um, items like that. Did it occur was the you, was the type of weapon identifiable so this was a conglomeration of stuff coming out of the coroner's offices which report to the department i want to say it's through the from the cdc and i always call it the department of vital statistics but it's very similar to that in the name and that also is extremely whiskers yes i love whiskers whiskers is awesome um whiskers is extremely valuable when you are working on your two-way stuff. 
Um, but before we get to whiskers that Gabriel mentioned, uh, the thing to notice with the UCR, it was just raw. It was just raw data. It did not have who it, and it called it out as homicide, not as murder. There is specific legal definitions and the reasons for that. And um, the reason being, and this is the reason why some of the international data is so difficult to compare. Uh, and you have to go back and forth on some of the international data. Some of the international data tracked murder, not homicide. Homicide means death. Murder is a legal definition, meaning that somebody killed another person illegally. Self-defense is technically homicide. A person killed another person. Whether or not it is self-defense or or murder is a is very very distinctive is distinct is a very specific distinction that has to be done within a court of law. Well, here, um, right? But some cultures, I'm guessing, think, and I'm assuming, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate that if their culture thinks that death is a death, then you know what I mean? Like they might all agree, like no matter what the circumstances, this was, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think they're necessarily like, let's just be against the United States. I think well, they're not being against the United States is how they're reporting it. So they don't report it as a homicide. They report it as a murder. That's that what is, I mean, but I'm just saying they might be doing that just because of their moral framework. Yes. That's they see everything yeah. as a murder where we're just a little bit different and we like to. Make we're just calling it a homicide. It's a death of a body. Um, yeah. whereas they're not, and then there's countries rape. that don't value anything and they're just exactly. like, well, whatever that person's gone. Yeah. They're, they're not tracking it. So they're, and this is specific within Western Europe. Um, cause this is what gets pulled up all the time within Western Europe. There are specific countries that only track murder. They don't track homicide. So when this is the whole thing of knowing the definitions of the terminology being used in the discussion. Australia is the same way. People talk about, oh, Australia pulled all the guns, they're gun free. No, Australia is not legally gun free. Australia, um, Australian citizens do have guns and technically after their third um, so-called uh, nationwide buyback, there's more guns there now than there was after the first one. So one of the things to look at is the definitions of the terms. This is only th this is going to empower you and give you an individual who's wanting to learn 2A stuff the knowledge to address comments, the knowledge to address somebody. It's like um, because a lot of you have to remember some of these individuals who are on the anti side have been schooled, taught. Um, pretty much given a like, like prepped no i'm saying indoctrinated but like basically given enough prep like here if you just like anybody like here's a poster here's some some powerpoints or whatever on our position mm -hmm. here's why guns are so bad right and then they start figuring out oh okay here's some reasons why guns are so bad yes and so they'll use that specific and they have that from watts Giffords and Brady's organizations. They have that available. Yes, the UK only counts murders if the suspect is found guilty. That's very, very distinctive. And it's a, and when you have a homicide, the homicide could have been natural. The, it's a dead body. Humans died. Could have been a self-defense shooting. Could have been a self-defense action. Um can't call it murder because you don't know if the actions taken by that person was in self-defense or was it done in murder or was it done in anger which has a different classification level so that's one of the things and the difference between a suicide and a murder is homicide um i'm not quite understanding that uh if it's between self-inflicted and somebody who has done the action then yes um it depends also... well, they'll, 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 since there are no can you hear that i'm getting some thunder there's <laughs> um there's not like as far as i know there's not like a well i guess jake would know there are i guess books that do quantify is that the right where like give the actual definitions of medical yes. terms yes but it's since there's not something like that in the law then yes actually just there is Yes, well, but I'm is. saying most because people don't, don't pay most, attention. There's no, I mean, I don't know where right. there would be a thing that says what, uh, 
Well, I guess no. There, you're right. There would be someplace somewhere, but I mean, in the regular whatever the words people you know the in common phraseology or whatever, they'll say something like violent deaths so that they can include suicides. Correct, and that's one of the reasons why they use firearm deaths because right, the use right. of no, that's firearm perfect. deaths. That's, yeah, I mean, this exactly. is the best one. The use of firearms de deaths means that they can include suicides, which are between 65 to 75 percent of all firearm de firearm fatalities year over year. And whiskers, this brings up to what Gabriel says. Whiskers, you can pull that information out quite easily on that. Um, it's a dynamic database through the CDC that allows you to find out how people die and by what method, the ages, the sex, the region, the state, and depending upon the locality that's reporting, you can even go down to the city and the, uh, besides the county. Whiskers is getting the information from the medical examiners. The medical examiners, all this information is legally reported to the CDC for the causes of the death. There is a massive tome that is put out every year by the CDC from, that's like the, the vital statistics. And this tells you everything. Um, I'm going to drop in the 2018 because that's what I have bookmarked right now. Um, but it's like an overwhelming amount of data that oh, then yes. it's, will go to that data set, take oh, whatever yeah. filters they want to it, and then offer their interpretations of what the mm -hmm. data says based on whatever, quote unquote, they've decided is the science or the theory, uh, the, yes. set, the, the way to pull it. Unfortunately, after 2020, a lot of the data we cannot trust because of what has been happening with specific infectious diseases. Because of that and because of how you have hospitals lying on the death certificates where the medical examiners have been blowing the whistle saying, no, this is not what it was. And then you have the insurance companies opening up investigations into why a 23-year-old passed away by a nonviolent cause. Insurance companies, if you ever take a look at your policy, if you work for somebody, you can pull it up and you can read it. Um, everyone signed and it's like, oh, do you want extra additional insurance for accidental death and dismemberment? Um, always take a look and see what that is because you can pull up um, what they cover. The insurance companies, if the medical examiner doesn't look into this, the insurance companies will, and they are because they don't like paying out money. And the actuary tables, which is how the insurance companies determine what the rates are for a specific age group and risk factors are, are not happy because they're having to pay out a lot of money right now. So, and Gabriel's correct, figure out how to use whiskers. It is critical if you're going to be in the two-way community, fighting for two-way rights and getting involved in everything else. This is a valuable database. And so the what we're talking about, again, is a, is a uh, hosted subset of the CDC numbers yes. that offers like filter or searchable, usable, yes. it's like subsets of the stuff that we care about, filtering out all the weird stuff like somebody stuck a pencil in their eye or something weird. Yes. It'll go through all that data and everything else. So the with each part it allows you to find out that information why is that important it allows you to and i can have the whiskers link right here i found it um and this will be the last link that i'm uh, sending over to gwebs so the whiskers is how do you not give views but challenge this bullshit information okay um when you challenge bullshit information ask for citations if the individual gives you a citation from a known um, anti-site, ask for better. The other thing to know is to realize that some of these sites where it is a Johns Hopkins University and things like that, 
learn how to read the individual's data who is preparing either the survey or the study or the report. They have to since, and I can't remember when the date was, I want to say mid mid 90s, a little bit after into the early aughts, there was a couple of scandals that came out where you had to show who was paying for the survey, who was paying part of the salary for the um, researchers, who was paying for the grants. There's a website called The Trace. Anybody who has been following some of the stuff for a while will know that The Trace is um, a publication, and I use that loosely, that tries to push a anti 2 way narrative. And actually several times on some of the stuff, an anti-rights narrative. The Trace was established by Michael Bloomberg and is heavily funded by a large group of antis. When you see who is on the Trace's website, then you will and see who's um, supporting it. Um, and they will try to do good articles every, every so often too. But the thing with that is you have to understand that this is a group and everything else who wants to let's see if I can find that link. Um, donate. Yeah, no, I don't want to donate. Where's the about? The about. And how to, donor and financial transparency. This is critical. So for the trace, you have Emerson Collective, Every Town for Gun Safety Support, F3 Foundation, Foundation Beyond Belief, the Franklin Philanthropic Foundation, the Joyce Foundation, Levi Strauss Foundation, Lisa and Douglas Goldman Fund, and it goes on and on and on. Schwab Charitable Fund. Any of you who has your 401k or your anything dealing with your um, uh, retirement funds and things like that for your stocks. Charles, Schwa the Schwab Foundation that I just mentioned, the charitable fund, they're using what they make off of your trades to fund anti 2 a materials. Levi Strauss, as a company, the CEO actually has stated within their 10Q reports. The 10Q reports are critical. The 10Q reports are the financial health of a company that are required by SEC regulations to submit, where they state that the CEO and other board members might be making statements that will cost the company money from people who patronize and buy their product. Anytime you buy Levi's jeans, you are paying the antis to be testifying against you, running databases, because the CEO has stated that he will pay his employees for their volunteer time if it's anti-2A. Now, if you know an organization who is completely non-discriminatory, open to anybody for uh, training and things like that, um, they can apply for a grant from Levi Strauss F uh, Foundation to help fund their program. This is where we can use their money to help us know how to write the grants. There are individuals who can help with that. So um, let's see. So when you ask, uh, I know I just got off tangent. Um, All right, well, let me, let me take this back then. <laughs> so the idea is, you know, I started out with the like direction of as a person who wants to become a Second Amendment advocate, what resources would be available? So if you were, we've kind of got, we went over a bunch of different things. I've made some bullet points, mm -hmm. understanding the local and level politics, local and state level, poli level political system so that you can 
participate or understand the what needs to happen for the participation. So if, I'm just going to throw in there, if you don't want to do it or you're not able to do it, at least you can support the people. You understand that it's a necessary component mm -hmm. and what's involved so you can support those who are willing or able. Then uh, make appointments and speak to those representatives. So in addition to just being vocal and available when they have something at their discretion to bring to challenge us or to take away our stuff, or occasionally when we take something up to them and we want to show support, Additionally, make some appointments, get to know your representatives, meet with them, understand their position, you know, that kind of thing. Again, if you can't do that or not able to do that or unwilling to, to do that, understanding that others can, we don't have to, every day has to do the same thing. Right. You can support those who are making, I mean, the DC project's a great example of that on a, you know, a national consistent yes, effort. Is. And, and on a local got, level too. DC project works not only on federal, but they also work on state. Um, there's so definitely been other ones before. Yeah. I mean, that's what NRA did. And, mm -hmm. you know, they've wavered, but they still have that legacy. But then that means what did their people all vanish? You know, oh, Wayne bought an expensive suit. So a bunch of people vanished more than likely from what I understand, listening to a couple of different things uh, fairly recently, you know, those lobbyists have gone Ronin, you know, they still have the focus and the ability and the skill set. It's just, they don't have the faith in the NRA to, in the backing anymore. So, right. Do those people still exist? Is there any three-level yes. national life organization rounding them up and putting them to work? I'm not aware of that. ILA is the is the side of the NRA that you need to be if you have questions. People will see sign up for the NRA's list. The NRA has ILA. The uh, uh, you know the God, I can't remember what it is. Something Institute for Legislative Action. Action. Yes, that is the side that does all the lobbying, not the NRA specifically. So it's called NRA ILA. ILA is very specific. It is the lobbying arm. And this is something that I know I've said before on many, not just here, but on many other locations. The NRA ILA is the only organization who is a registered lobbyist in all 50 states. Why is that important? If you want to speak early during a committee hearing that is when you are impaneled by the lobbyist know who your lobbyist is learn how to speak concisely specifically targeted on point to the bill that is being submitted i can't tell you how many times we heard individuals saying my rights my rights my rights does absolutely nothing at the end of a two-hour hearing where we're closing up that's what ends up being what people what the legislators end up hearing is individuals who are going on oh well it's just my rights and this and that it's the two-way shall not infringe i'm sorry guys move on behind that yes we know that but to be active and to change the message and to be the way to address the complexity that is going on it's human rights it's not my rights it's our rights it's the human right of self-determination that is guaranteed by self-defense that is by the nature of every single person who is born, they have that human right. So we're talking the same way that someone might buy a firearm and consider themselves armed. That's, mm -hmm. you're fine, you can do that. You can go to the store and do that. Now, some people may decide to get a CCW permit or something like that, and that's fine, Correct. you can do that. Some people may do that and take a class, and that's fine. And then somewhere along there, you may just hear something, of the, if, if you do any of these steps or continue along a path towards furthering your own education in firearms, you're eventually going to get to the idea of being able to articulate your actions in court, right? Correct. That concept. So the same way that someone might attain to get to that level of uh, familiarization and um, skill at CCW at you know being responsible carry and some people would suggest that that's something that everyone should attain to right like there's I can definitely tell you people you know people who probably think everyone should attain to that level of let's say professionalism or whatever 
well, then isn't that the same thing you're talking about? Being able to have a conversation, or in this case, a brief, uh, what's it called, like a testimonial, usually mm -hmm. two minutes or five minutes at the most, to uh, yeah. to some kind of a committee that's in charge of res taking those bits to the representatives as a whole, or maybe voting does not even take it because there's nothing worth taking. Correct. So what I'm going to say is if you're talking about, we're talking, we kind of got off there on the NRA ILA being the, I'm going to call them being like the promoters. In other words, they're kind of yeah. like lawyers or they're kind of like uh, music promoters. They have the ability, or real estate agents, they have the ability to work in every state, which isn't something that everybody else attains. They don't have the resources or the inclination. Somebody mm -hmm. who starts up being a gun rights organ, or a gun owner's rights organization in a state doesn't necessarily spread to every other state. The NRA was in a position to be able to do that in the 70s, thanks to a couple of people, and they did. So now they've got this, you know, they've got the credentials to be able to go to each state. But yeah. being a real estate agent, being a lawyer in each state is great. But if you don't have plaintiffs, if you don't have properties, then what good is it? Yeah. So if people go, oh, the NRA, some guy bought suits because two or three people at the NRA are mean and they keep a bunch of other people in the dark, then I'm not going to support the NRA. Well, that trickles down. And now someone who's like, well, I am able to articulate but I'm not going to support the NRA because people suggest that it's not a good idea. And maybe even if I did support the NRA, I'm aware that I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be made fun of or given mm -hmm. some kind of treatment because I have uh, involved myself with them. And now right. the NRA person, the person who's able to lobby, that doesn't mean they're an expert. It means that they're like a lawyer. It means they're a real estate agent. They don't build the house. They don't like create the vacancy. They just facilitate the transaction. They've been around contracts mm -hmm. before. They, they understand the process, so they make it easier for you, and they take a small cut. So that person who is a lobbyist doesn't mean that they know how to take people out and do the whining and dining. They just have the license to get people in the door to offer those testimonials. So I tradition. think that you're, Right. So what we're talking about is tradition. becoming a good activist could just be, be able to concisely and effectively communicate in a short time our positions, especially the nuance of them, and then make yourself available to people who you may not want to go eat dinner with, or you may not want to trust with your $50. But mm -hmm. if they have the key to the door, then go stand in line with them and offer so that they have the best resources available because what they're doing is, like you just said, giving the uh, committee people or the people who are going to decide whether or not this is going to move along more resources, actual nuance to the conversation and not all the stuff you mentioned. Correct. And that's one of the things that's that's really key when it comes down to this is when you submit written testimony, when you because everybody gets these emails going through. Have a good night, Gabriel. Um, when you have uh, when you submit written testimony and you'll see the examples they're like, oh, just put your name on here and everything else and send it. Change the subject line. And make sure that you have a unique subject line. You have a template that has been established for the wording. Take that template. If you have to print it out, print it out. Make it personal. Make it so that when you send that email, you have a personal story attached to that. Keep it short and everything else. Um, and the use what the NRA puts out or use what the FPC puts out. Use what GOA puts out. Um, sometimes uh, the DC project will do something also. Figure out why the two way is important to you to your family, to your friends, to your community. Tailor your statements when you reach out to um, the legislatures, legislators, legislators, to the represent to the elected representatives, because it's counties, not legislators. Uh, figure out how to approach it and state this is why I'm voting. I want you to vote this way because of X, Y, and Z. If you have documentation that supports,
supports what you're saying, don't put it into the main body. Have it as an attachment. Have it as a second or a third. If you see your rep elected representative in person, have a cover sheet. Think of high school book reports where you have a bibliography. You have your cover page of what your report's supposed to be. That's your five minute or your two to five minute statement. Have that written down on there. Then have the documentation that supports your position behind it so that they can reference it. DJ Play Nice is right. This is more than party lines. This is more than partisan. When you have an individual who is on the politically left side of the spectrum, they are not going to be concerned as much about human rights. They're going to be concerned more about minority and marginalized community rights. Knowing that and knowing how to tailor your message to whom you're speaking with is key. Saying my rights shall not be infringed to somebody who is a Democrat socialist, you've lost them. Even though you both believe in the Second Amendment. How do I know this? Because I've had members of the Socialist Rifle Association in Washington state testify against gun control bills. The re elected representatives who are anti-2A do not like to see individuals who are not white political conservative males. They don't want to see them because that's who the stereotypes of the NRA, oh, that person's just following with this two ways, they're going to go with the whole two way racist and everything else. By having self-defense as a human right for anybody, whether it is a um, minority, a woman, a marginalized community, or any other male, or any male. That's key. Immigrants who come to this country know that they, many of them come here because they have the ability to protect themselves. There's a handful of countries who have codified self-defense. The United States is one of them. And with everything else, that's one of the things. When you're on the range and you happen to talk to somebody besides of, oh, that's an interesting gun. I really like what to see this. Oh, um, hey, have you heard about the whole thing? That individual brings it up. Yeah, I'm really upset because I can't get any more magazines because they're restricting them on 10 rounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that really sucks. This is what I've been doing. We've got a whole group and a whole team that are working to fight these particular items and hey we could use your help we know that you can't testify some people can't some people will lose their job they lose their job they lose their home they lose their ability to provide for their families somebody who is out in the open there are times that i am i am amazed that i am still working where i work because the state that I live in is very anti. One of the things that I push on though, with the whole 2A is education on firearm safety to prevent childhood accidental injury and death, and also on suicide prevention. I am hard on all, to me, it's a trifecta. And you need all three uh, for that to protect the second. So when you're starting off and trying to um, get people involved, get people involved with, uh, if you're lurking, looking to find, see what Isla is doing. See when they do their legislative, because Isla will actually do a seminar in person in every state, in every area. 
Sign no, up hold on. When you say Isla will do a seminar, you're they talking. Do seminar that they do a state. seminar for second. Okay, a seminar for second to create a Second Amendment advocate. A seminar to explain the sit rep on the what's the seminar? What's the focus? Oh, or the everything. Topic? They're doing on what what the sit rep is, what the what can be done, trying to get people to be grassroots to make phone calls, things like that. It's okay. everything. Um, are they while coordinated? You're, are they with yeah, the NRA coordinated. meetings? Or I mean, are they yes. coordinated like they're all in September or they they're different? In? It depends on the state legislature. Each legislature meets at a different time of the year. Not every state legislature meets at the same time. Okay. In other words, they coordinate so that they're useful with the actual. They try to. With the yes. frequency or the calendar of. That makes sense. So in yeah. other words, it's stupid to do it in October if everything needs to be done in September or whatever. Or Correct. In or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's or a resource I've like never heard anybody talk about because it's too cool to say the NRA is lame and to not give the NRA any credit except for anything bad they ever may have done or have mm -hmm. done or so anyway, Isla so does powerful work. The NRA, and I do consider them to be very, very specific groups, two distinct. They are actually financially and legally two distinct groups. Um, the NRA is one is one group. Isla is another. And that's because that they are the, this is again thing, they are the lobbying arm. The lobbying arm cannot do what the NRA safety training is or anything like that. They legally have a charter that must be followed. They're different because at the federal level, there's rules and yes, they're applying or they're obeying those rules, but the NRA wouldn't have an ILA with the resources and history and the, the flex that it's got if it didn't have a massive membership that Correct. drives everything to it. So it, yeah. they are separate technically, but at the same time, I don't, I'm not going to dance around uh, again, nobody's listening this far into it <laughs> going to be offended because we're aware of the NRA. Yeah. People that are blinded to hear something about the NRA, think about that. Who's, who's, who's conditioned you to not even talk about this? Is Wayne so powerful that his suit repels you to even understand the three letters? You know what I mean? Like we're talking about a one guy who's done some stuff and then some people who, you know, profited. How hard is it to get rid of people? We get rid of people all the freaking time. He got yeah. there because people got rid of people. So it's just a matter of uh, when that happens or whatever. But anyway, so without getting too far that way, um, I kind of interrupted you there as you were talking okay. about the idea of going to these seminars. So, is is there anything these... else that's out there that's like an instructional for like how to be a, a activist or how to be yes. a QA activist? Um, with, uh, there's actually a legislative and do I'll have to send this to you. Let me see if I can find this. Um, there is a, we here here in Washington state, there was a two legislative assistants. And these are the women who work for the legislators. They work for the state. They work in the state capitol. They actually did a whole beautiful program of how to be effective as a individual going to your um, state legislators or county um, representative and things like that. Uh, it's, it, they, they, Would you call that lobbying when an individual... You are lobbying. You are lobbying. Um, so don't let anybody say that you're not lobbying. I mean, there you is such lobbying. a thing as like professional lobbyists, but you're mm -hmm. they are professional lobbyists, but other people can partake in the act of lobbying, which is yes. basically saying, I want you to talk about a position. I'm making it vocal. My position on this is a mm -hmm. constituent, like yeah. start representing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you work on trying to find a solution or you're trying to work on a process to have the ability to say like, Hey, I don't want to see my, um, what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, how everything is going with how laws are being, how bills are being submitted, how laws are being done and things like that. Um, there is a way to approach um, the information on this. Every single state will have like understanding the procedure. Yes. 
Every single state will have that. They will have it on their website. And generally it's whatever the state is dot, um, dot leg um for the same way that when you get when you get when you get that thing in the mail that tells you how to vote at like every level from like i can't read to like here's everybody's position on it if you can read like it's it's trying to help everybody understand so they're going to have something like a resource so it makes sense that yeah that would be a good place and so one of the things i just dropped to you that i'm dropping right now this is from washington state and this is the civics on how a bill becomes law and this is from the state legislature I'll have to get the other thing that I'm thinking about um, and send that over to you because I do, I'm not quickly finding it and not surprised because my um, uh, bookmarks are a complete uh, fiasco right now. Um, but there are ways to get the information that you need. There are groups on, if you're on Facebook, there are groups on Facebook that will do more of a 2A side on the legislative side. There are others that won't. They'll be more like my rights um, shall not be infringed. Learn what they are. Um, then you have FPC. They will have information on how how some stuff on how to get involved. Uh, same thing with the Gun Owners of America. Same thing. They'll have some stuff on how to get involved um once you know i mean the old thing of schoolhouse rock uh schoolhouse rock actually had correct information on how a bill becomes law on the general sense states are very specific they're going to be a little bit different from that know that process know when your legislature sets up the bills and things like that in washington as an example um shortly after the election in november bills that are going to be submitted for the following year's legislative session are going to start coming in including title only bills this goes back to the whole thing of read the bills know how bills are being changed know how to find your legal code on the website. It's all there. Everything that you need to fight gun control and how they are doing their bills is online on the state's websites. It's there. Because if they're doing this as a legislative bill to become law, there are specific documentations on what needs to be done and how the steps are being done and what the full bill is the biggest bill that i have read has been 600 pages all right so uh, would i'm going to play devil's advocate to somebody who says okay well now we're just like discovering our resources or whatever so now i'm going to say we know some resources and some strategies and some uh, stuff, other stuff that we talked about in the process. But now I'm going to make you the player in this game. It's a chessboard, and all the advocates. You don't have to use specific names, but you know all the different players that we have, and whatever ones you might need. Right? It's not you know you have yeah. to your you have available to you. How would you, as a strategist, somebody setting up a chess game as chessboard or something? The adversary, you know, is the the antis and they've got all their players and their pieces out there. How would you set it up? Would you have like a 50 percent people heading to the to, to fight the laws and then 50 percent to the uh, go into the Supreme Court and making people aware? Or would it be all activism and education so that none of this stuff even gets into the political end? Because I think there's some people out there that go to that. Would it be some other mix or, you know, if you had all the, everything that we, not more than just we talked about tonight, but all the stuff you're aware of and you were the grand general, everybody said, you know what, let's just let her use us as our resource and then you use us effectively. Is there some way you can, I know I'm throwing that at you out of nowhere, but is it, That's okay. that, how would you answer that? One? <laughs> this is actually interesting. Being thrown questions like this, if you're wanting to get started and everything else, when you know your subject and you know your subject matter, you can answer quick. You can answer at the drop of a hat. Education. 
safety education. And then the next thing is also you want to prevent these bills from even being considered from getting out of committee or through a voter initiative process. You want to stop it there. And the next thing is that you want to prevent individuals from uh, counter everything. If you have a website and things like that, or if you, if you are good at writing, but you're not good at public speaking, there are methods to get your message out where you can cite your resources, cite your statements through Substack, through locals.com, through minds.com, using alternative tech as a way to document why you feel this is not a good bill, why you feel the education is important. There are several key individuals in the Pacific Northwest, out on the East Coast, and then in the South, who, if you use them as references and help boost the signal of what they are doing, then you have the ability to counter, oh, the 2A community is not doing anything. All they're doing is just pushing guns, pushing guns, pushing guns. You can say, hey, no, I'm not, because I believe in safety education and taking the mystique and the mystery of the firearm away from the young child so that they know that this is not a toy. It's not a game. How do you do that? You've got Derek LeBlanc with Kids Safe Foundation. You also have um, the NRA's Eddie the Eagle. There's also several other ones called Erica's Big Day is a book. You have Yehuda Ramirez's books on safety, safety on and things like that. You also have Julie Golub who's written a book to help parents. All of these are educational resources that you can provide to somebody who is on the fence or even an anti. It's like, see, we're already doing this. And you'll be able to address the fact that the Be Smart program coming out of every town and mom's demand has actually plagiarized every single thing coming from Project Child Safe that the NSSF and all of the firearm manufacturers and the gun shops and the FFLs have paid to get established and put everything on. They actually have flat out plagiarized this. I have actually got screenshots of them using Project Child Safe's data and slides for their own that's the one thing the mom other at thing arms just to interrupt mom at arms had a video where somebody i think one of the ladies from mom at arms even went up to a booth and it was shan shan's people handing out uh it was either walk talk america or child yeah. i think it was child safes yeah things and they're like you know this is nsf and they're like so what <laughs> like yeah, they, they don't care what NSS, well they don't know what NSS is they don't and they don't realize just, you're they were something told, give us away it's our message even though it's mm -hmm. literally a pro-gun message yes. but that's because people are capitalizing on the rift between us it's yes. people that are willing to go over and say gotcha you're using our thing who gives a fuck that's not that's worthless that creates the rift that em em emboldens the rift the person who comes up and goes hey can I show you something let me show you something on my phone Look, I found that same wristband and now zoom out. Guess what? That was from Remington or whatever. That was from NSSF, who's run by Remington. Like that's mm -hmm. a that's a gun initiative. So it's awesome that you guys are able to reach across the table. I'm glad you're doing that. Right. Yeah. That's a whole and, different and conversation, it, right? And use it for them as a way to say like, oh, really appreciate you supporting the Second Amendment by supporting NSSF. And mm -hmm. this um, is how we truly save lives by making yes. kids aware the same way we teach them about dangerous things in the garage or the kitchen. We teach them that there's dangerous other things in the world. You don't exactly. touch a saw, you don't touch a gun, you don't touch the running car. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't touch a dog, right? You teach them not to go yank on a snake. Don't put, don't put, don't put your head on the top of the dog unless you know that dog. Because yeah, that's exactly. It's, it's, and then the people that, like that are like, the people that are like, oh no, you never touch a dog. You're not going to teach my kid nothing about a dog. Guess who's going to get picked? Guess who's not going to understand something? Mm -hmm. they, were, they were so anyway. Um, we're we're doing the what I try not to do, which is to just pick on the people for be, not understanding. But I'm trying to but it, it's light not, on the fact that it's really the rift. People will yes. sit there and capitalize on that rift forever on both sides mm -hmm. instead of just shutting up, shaking hands, and walking across and saying, "Hey, you know what? What we really want to do is teach kids." And you're you're so against everything that you're against kids safe. What's that? Yeah. Well, that's where we teach kids, be careful of guns and leave them alone and that kind of stuff. You've taken that out of schools and then you get mad that there's accidents. So let's get yeah. back to having fewer accidents by 
without even a gun. We have things called these in their blue guns. They're just in the shape of a gun. And that's yep. not going to hurt anybody. And then they can teach kids all this stuff. They never happen to be around one. Kids mm -hmm. that want to be around one, learn how to do it. And now guess what? It's normalized. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. No, so no that's a good How to play chess. So you started out by saying uh, some educations. And then I think Going you actually to... took it even to the more extreme saying, use that kind of stuff you alluded to before, understanding how the political system works, but yes. using it not just for two-way, but how to get rid of ballot initiatives and some of yes. the stuff that are used as the things that are used as weapons in the political system, mm -hmm. right? Get rid of those weapons and make the political system more of like, here's some rules, not here's a bunch of dictates. Right. And here's, and, and this goes through the whole thing. Red flag laws do not violate the second amendment at all. It is only at the absolute end when a red flag order is exercised, does it violate the second amendment. The entire process of a red flag or an extreme risk protection order is a violation of the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth and ninth amendments, the due process. That's what the ERPOs are. So when you say and you talk to somebody about, oh, well, red flag laws save lives. No, they don't because they do not get that in individual to medical care. All of us who have purchased a firearm brand new from a from a FFL know on the 4473, it asks whether or not you have been involuntarily committed over 72 hours. The 72 hours is key because I believe it's a Brady um, and Jake Wilkinson from Walk the Talk America, Zephyr Wellness, has more details on this. Um, it's a Brady Act or a Brady um process i don't know if it's because named because of james brady who was shot when reagan was sh the assassination attempt was made but that is a nationwide regulation where an individual is involuntarily committed either by law enforcement or by a medical personnel to get sustained targeted medical help for mental health this is to make sure that that person's not going through a crisis is not going through um, a medical issue that's causing a mental crisis and you are required by the law to be in front of the judge after the 72nd, 72nd hour and that's where everybody is going to be there the patient the individuals who signed off on the 72 on the um, in California, it's also known as a 5150, who have signed off on the 72 hour hold. And then they also have an individual who's representing the patient to say, and the doctors who have assessed the individual. These are in, everybody's going in front of the judge. And that's the point where you th that is the decision is the person going to voluntarily get additional help, which does not preclude a, viol a, rest a restriction of the 4473? Are they going to be involuntarily committed further, which does restrict the 44, um, their answer on the 4473? Or is the person good? Are they fine? And they can be released and maybe follow up with a mental health professional later on. For those who have questions about that process and how to answer it, see what Walk the Talk America, Zephyr Wellness, with Mike Sedini and uh, Jake Wilkershin have done. What they have put together is extremely powerful. Somebody who is in suicidal crisis, know that there is a new number called 998. I believe that's what it is. 998 instead of 911 or 988. It's a new national number that gets you to the suicide prevention hotline. You text 741741, text help or talk. That gets you to the suicide prevention hotline. There are specifics with veterans. There are specifics within marginalized communities that help those specific communities because they have very uh, specific very targeted needs to help prevent suicide. 
me personally, one of the things in being a 2A supporter and a 2A advocate is, is knowing how to address suicide prevention, knowing how to address the fact that suicide is more than 50% year over year of firearm fatalities. Now, when you take a look at all suicides, which Wickers that um, I brought up earlier will tell you and show you that non-firearm suicides have become parity with firearm suicides. That does not include opioid usage and overdoses. That was breached six years ago. The reason why they can't put all those opioid overdoses in as suicides, because there's no note. And because there's no note on those, they cannot classify those as suicide. So that is a critical thing. And if you want to hit them on this, when you have an anti who's pushing on the firearm fatalities and on the accidents and things like that, ask them why aren't they working on suicide prevention? We have young children who, during these lockdowns, have had their lives destroyed, where you have third graders committing suicide during the Zoom class sessions with a firearm so that all their other classmates see this. Sometimes the teacher's assistant is able to shut the screen off so that the students don't see what's going on, but it is an issue. When you hear the comparison that the states with the lax firearm laws have more firearm fatalities, these are individuals who are being knowingly deceptive because the, the firearm fatalities are the suicides. Who are your suicides? Your suicides are your rural white men who are farmers and ranchers. They're also your Leos, your first responders, including your fire department, and they're also your veterans. So those are the individuals who live in states where they are more pro 2A with less gun control. So anybody who uses that statement that the states with the lax gun laws are the ones that are the problem because they have more firearm fatalities, that is an individual who is being either parroting what they have been told by Giffords, Brady, Moms Demand, Every Town, or it's somebody who does know and is being malicious about the statistics of what's going on. If you don't want to work on the political side of being a 2A advocate, it's too much, everything else, it's too risky for your career and being able to provide for family, work on the suicide prevention. That is going to be more valuable than preventing some of these laws. Because if we can get those numbers down as the community that we are, which is what we did on accidental deaths with, with Colonel, retired Colonel Cooper's uh, four rules, because if you look prior to the 1970s, when Colonel Cooper put those rules out. Are you just whole, saying that or have you seen something that associates? Well, I've seen the dates. I've seen the data. There is hard data that shows that accidental deaths used to be significantly higher. Oh, no, I know that part. But I'm saying, have you seen anything that attributes it to the mass? Uh, what's the word? Like the mass distribution of those four safety rules? Yes. It's within it's within it's within five years those numbers dropped and those numbers since then have been below five hundred a year year over year. Twenty twenty one saw a spike, but twenty twenty one and part of twenty twenty are a statistical anomaly based upon the lockdowns and things like that. So anybody who brings that up, you must address the fact that the lockdowns threw a monkey wrench into everything, just like. Uh, the incident in Vegas is a statistical anomaly. You have to pull those out. Anybody who knows how to do statistics will understand what a statistical anomaly is. But yes. Um, well, that's pretty unrealistic, though. For somebody who's against evil and bad things, and you're allowed to just be against that. Like, yeah. That's 
there's no law that says you have to be like some kind of you know clinical or whatever so somebody can just be against stuff and then to to say well we're not going to count that one that don't work you know what i mean like, it it's might more, work for a, theoret- for a, for a uh, ed- what am i trying to say like a, a school setting but mm-hmm. for just having a conversation with somebody for having a conversation I with somebody that if somebody's like oh i'm just going to take the one thing that's the worst and just take it out of the mix I mean, but then if you have to add in the fact that you've had bombings and you've had other things that have caused more deaths than just that specific incident and no no I- that's true and that's where i would say instead of saying i'm going to take that out i would just right. say i'm going to exactly. i'm going to put okay, that yes. down on the table cuz you're saying that's the big thing and that's true mm-hmm. like that happened I mean, yeah, I don't, it it's possible don't deny it, but and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Like that's the way everybody's mm-hmm. laying it down. It's going to be part of history is like whatever happened. So now let's talk about, you know, there's a lot of ways to approach it and depending, I think it depends on the person. You're not going to take, Oh, well, here's a bombing. Here's what poison could do. You know, yes. some people don't want to hear all that. That's going against their grain. That's going to put up a wall up, but you mm-hmm. might be able to say, uh, some other approach. I don't necessarily have, yeah, to have and, it and this, right now, but you could have a, a, a series of approaches and decide which one you're going to pull out of the roll, uh, out of the card deck mm-hmm. and use for this person during this yes. conversation. And, and then some critical. people will also throw in there. Sometimes the person you're talking to is just not going to happen. Like, but you can use the opportunity because you're having an opera, you're not having a conversation. You're having a conversation with one person in front of 12 people or online. Now you may not change this person's mind, but you may be able to take some stuff out of your card deck that you've heard before, put it out there. And those other people now heard it. And even if whatever, that other person's probably just going to be able to say, well, 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 but you know, now that's out there. It's not like a court where the judge can say, Oh no, you got to take that back. Nobody can Mm -hmm. remember that. Everyone's going to hear it. So some of it is, that's part of the art. No, like, just like you said earlier, knowing, the whole spectrum lets you lay down cards strategically once in a while, even if it doesn't make you win that hand, it lays down some framework so people know you're the real deal or you know what you're talking about and that kind of thing. Know how to approach the different social media platforms if you're engaging such discussions on social media. Realize that there are individuals who are there and who are out there who will intentionally try to trap you to get you suspended, to get you booted off permanently. And then they'll say like, oh, well, this person's just stating this. There are um, individuals that you can tag on social media, on Twitter, on TikTok. Yes, there is a large two-way community that is pro two-way who is countering some of the anti conversations right now on TikTok. yes it is china it is you're putting personal information out there know what your risks are when you use any of the social media platforms anything that you put online will be used against you if you end up in a horrific situation where you have to defend your life know that anything that you put out there will be used if you've put anything out on social media and it doesn't matter if it is a private account or if it is a public account because the prosecutors have the ability to petition and request from the social media providers the account the companies they can request all those records know that don't joke around with some stuff if you do do it in person where someone's not recording you um but the whole thing on how to address some stuff realize that people are going to be listening to you realize that when you're having some of the art some of the discussions whether it's an argument or not online like say on twitter or on TikTok or on Facebook, realize that there are people who are reading that conversation. Be polite for all that is holy and all the tea that is in China. Please do not use the terms Republic Tard, maggot, or Democrat, or whatever it is. You've lost the argument at that point. Keep it civil. I will call people ghouls for using data in a way that intentionally hides what is going on. Know your mark, know where you're doing this stuff. 
So if you're somebody who's getting started and you don't know where to do, yes, we have thrown a crap ton of information since I've come online. Sign up with the ILA for your state, for your area, to know when they are doing seminars. These seminars are going to be for the upcoming legislative session. If there is voter initiatives that are happening in your state, they will have, they will sometimes do a seminar on that. If you have uh, elections come, everybody's got elections coming up every two years, the representatives for both the state and for the federal are up for re-election. One third of the Senate is up for re-election. And depending on your state legislature, each one of those is handled differently. Find out who your district precinct person is. A lot of the primaries are happening right now. Washington is the top two that go on to the general. Get involved by talking to people. Get involved by wearing a t-shirt that says, um, not whatever, it's not like, oh, the second member of this. There's a lot of things that, like say, um, not everybody likes them, but Maj does have good shirts freedom over with the line over everything know where that comes from which is blackstone's ratio and where ben franklin expanded blackstone's ratio blackstone used better for 10 guilty go free than one innocent be convicted and go to prison benjamin franklin said with the establishment of our bill of, of what we now call our bill of rights under the due process better that 100 guilty go free than one innocent be convicted and sent to prison that is key our due process is unlike no one else has this globally for this part no one does i don't care what people say about canada they have, and I don't care what people say about Australia, to actually look at the hard codified law, only in the United States are you truly innocent until proven guilty by a jury of your peers. So I didn't get, I, I'm thankful and glad you said that because I've heard <laughs> that 100 go free basically when I took some cop classes a long, long time ago, I remember that part of it. And I was like, that's decent. Like, of, you know, cause like you said, I, I took some introductory to police mm -hmm. classes and it's all about the theory and the history of policing and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I couldn't remember for life for me where I, where that came from, but I know I've seen it once in a while through whatever. So you said that Franklin came up with that, but Franklin, Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin expanded it. It's yeah, called so Black, Blackstone's Ratio, and Blackstone is part of English law. He okay, so he, Franklin improved it because the United States is better yes. than stupid England's Blackstone's 10 to 1? Okay. 10 to 1. He expanded it. It's No, it's really 100 to 1. Myself and several others that I know of, I look at it as 10,000 to 1. It is better than 10,000 guilty go free than one innocent be convicted and sent to prison. Why does this matter? Because you have individuals where they have had their lives destroyed by false accusations. And this is where your IRPAs, your extreme risk protection orders, and your red flag laws come into key. Red flag laws are being used right now in family law courts to destroy the other party. Generally, it's the father because the father is the one who, for the most part, on average, is the one who's buying the firearms. So the separated wife is using the extreme risk protection order, lying about it to have those firearms seized, causing an additional risk and penalty against the against the against the other spouse that is a problem when you have the innocent project which is a project that reviews death row inmates cases the last number that i saw which was several years ago and i want to say from 2018 the innocent project has shown that over 150 men on death row were innocent. 
how many were killed with a death sentence. These are individuals where lawyers have volunteered their time and other data analysis and other individuals have gone through the records, everything to try to see if they have a case, because you have to, in order to reopen a case to have somebody shown to be innocent after they've been convicted, it is a very high threshold. It is more than being, than going through the original trial. But when you have law, um, uh, law enforcement, when you have prosecutors, when you have witnesses who lie and who know that they can get away with um, uh, saying false accusations, perjure themselves with no repercussions, then yes, we have innocents who have been convicted. This is the reason why it is not just the second that we have to protect, but it's the most crucial because the second protects the first and the first protects the rest. You can't talk about an individual who's been wrongly convicted if the First Amendment has been restricted to individuals who are not desirable, cannot mount a defense or get heard in the public square. That is key. The fact that a couple of years ago, I had to defend frickin' Adam Waffen on a illegal red flag that was done by the FBI, utilized through Seattle Police Department in Snohomish County. The judge threw it out. But the fact that that individual had their natural rights violated, they specifically picked a horrific individual to go after. This is why we have to fight everything. The second protects, the first protects everything else. So if an individual is not sure about how to approach being political, work on firearm safety education for children, so that we don't have the accidents, we don't have the issues where a child is mistakenly reaching into their mother's purse because the mom didn't realize that there are purses specifically designed for concealed carry, or she didn't have a kydex holster protecting the trigger guard, and she gets shot and killed by her three-year-old child work on the that fire can be is that can be you mentioned a couple of the books i threw the link out there to edc guys um mm -hmm. uh erica's big day yes and, and, That's a great you know, book some of those you can just gift those to people right or yeah. make them available to ranges and stuff like having something like that in the uh, at a gun shop or something they might not even have to have it you know in stock it'd be cool if they did i'm sure they could but, you know, just having it around places where people can thumb through it. How many grandparents are going to be like, oh, dang, I'm going to buy a couple of these for whatever people I know or my grandkids or whatever. So just the idea of getting it into people's heads. They know how to go to Amazon and buy it. You mm -hmm. don't have to go around being a philanthropist. You can just strategically place them. Even sometimes you can take a buy a book, take a, a, a hole punch, punch a hole through it put some kind of cord on it so people realize it's not a free take this, but instead, you know, hey, this uh, this exists, you know, have it's that a library or something. It's a data library. Something else for somebody, for people to realize, you have farmer's markets that are across the country in small towns, large and in the cities. Farmer's markets are not restricted to just those providing a product in the sense of um fruits you and vegetables have other booths and stuff you can have like yes that. exactly so if you want so somebody is interested in doing this as just as a way you get a 10 by 10 the white pop-up i think they're about you want to get a good one they're not you want to you don't want to get a cheap one the cheap one will fall apart real quick you want to get one that's about 250. you can you can get them for free just drive around on like an early morning after a really bad wind <laughs> That too, if you want to do that. Um, 
but there's ways if you want to be and how you approach it if you want to do this for sending out the information walk the talk america will send you data in washington state forefront suicide prevention you email brett bass or any of the other individuals who are involved with that program they will send you a box of data on suicide prevention within washington state um the NRA will give you information and so that you can print it up. FPC, have something with it. Um, if anybody has seen some of my older posts on Instagram, I have what are, um, when I was still active within Pink Pistols, I still, I have what my booth looks like for that. I had signage, I had stuff to hand out. I had a lot of stuff to do exactly. Walk the Talk America. Have those cards out saying like, hey, want to give you some information, really care about you, hope you're having a wonderful day. If you know somebody who's having um, who's having problems, mental health issues or something like that, here's a great resource for you. I just print these. So I just get yeah. these things for like 60 cents or whatever and then print these and then mm -hmm. I start including them in the uh, stuff that goes out from the store. Yeah. 95% of the people who um, look into this and will take it from you will hold on to it. Halloween's coming up in 85 days. How about what the, think about somebody sees this little card at the shop or, you know, they just have it laying around, let's say, or they get it in their hands. And now it's not like you're, hey, I'm thinking, but it's like now they go, oh, I know where to leave this. I know who, you know. I'm going to put this in somebody's mail or like, I know where to, you know, where to stuff this in a magazine so that somebody sees it. And it's great. You have the community boards within a lot of the, a lot of the uh, grocery stores within the, with some people still go into banks for certain things. You also have it for barbershops, things like that. Hey, can I put some information up on, um, on your thing? And, using the walk the talk america using the stuff for suicide prevention using the stuff for safety education um another thing to bring up is if somebody's interested if you are in the medical profession and you are a nurse an emt or a paramedic or a physician you can become somebody who is certified to train and teach stop the bleed stop the bleed was done after Sandy Hook and something else, I, I think. And they realized it's like the first responders, as they call them, the first responders are actually us. It's the individuals, the communities in the neighborhood. We are the ones who are going to be there and being able to respond faster, quicker than waiting for 911, the ambulances and everything else to show up. Stop the Bleed goes through a program where it shows individuals how literally to stop a bleed. They go through tourniquet use, they go through wound packing, and they go through pressure bandages. They will also report to people that you're more likely to use this on somebody who has had a kitchen accident or a car accident than a gunshot. The gunshots are what people talk about. What happens more if someone has a knife injury from in the kitchen or working in the yard or something like that, or a car accident where they have a compound fracture or a fall due to a compound, a fall that has, that has established a compound fracture, how do you stop that bleed from that person from bleeding to death? Because that's where your minutes count. So that is something else. If you are in a profession, and this is even for teachers, Stop the Bleed is a valuable resource for that. And I believe um, Faster Saves Lives, which is based out of Colorado, goes into that. Uh, and, Ohio. Ohio. Okay, thank you. Um, but uh, hold on. I want to just go back for a second because we're not just, we don't have to just throw out stuff. So <laughs> the, um, well, because I could take a second to offer some, yeah. I just did a, stop the bleed online course it takes 26 minutes or 23 if you don't mm -hmm. blab a bunch of times so um all it is is how to stop someone's bleeding and there's a couple of different ways you can bleed that you wouldn't want to die from and it really just gives you a very very quick crash course on it so when we say like it's a course and it's first aid i mean it's it, there's pressure bandages there's a tourniquet and then there's some other or like two other things so there's like it just is a concise way of taking you through that 
I'd recommend doing, understanding it, take it online, feel free. It's worth the experience, but then take it in person because the hands-on literally will give you the whatever, everything you need to know to actually apply it if you ever had to. And then the last thing I'll add before you go on to faster is that it's just, and I just wanted to stop there because it's so much shorter than faster. Faster is like an actual thing. Yes. Um, and faster is geared to a very specific group too. too. But, but the, the thing about what you get with the, the stop the bleed course is empowered. So people who haven't experienced firearms until being adults, you understand what it's like to be empowered, not by the fetish of the gun, but by, understanding that that you had been for whatever reason on had the assumption that firearms were this or that and then you own a firearm and now you are empowered with the understanding of what firearm ownership is all about and the you know the, you have this understanding of what being a firearms owner is like because now you see it from both sides that kind of empowerment right like the empowerment of once you're a driver instead of just watching cars drive around once you know how to operate the car that's an empowerment right so mm -hmm. stop the bleed gives you the ability to save a life and that's something that a lot of people think is something otherworldly or that you have to have done a bunch of things but we're pretty much just fancy monkeys right so we're nothing more than anything else we can poke a hole in us and we bleed out this is simple stuff that I think that empowerment to that is a step to what else can I just master in mm -hmm. moments? Because that's literally all it takes to literally and think about it. Your parents, your kids, your anybody who you care about, or you just want to be a hero in you know when a hero is necessary. You want to be able to be right. Yeah, and I don't mean hero like a shine light on, but like you know yeah. to someone who is about to die. If you are able to offer aid to someone. Why not give yourself 20 minutes to be able to do that? In fact, yourself. I mean, what the hell? You're yeah, and they will show you how, and they will tell you how to, if you get a compound fracture in your thigh, depending on where that, where the piercing of the vascular, uh, the vascular system is, you may only have a few minutes to save your own life. And they will go into what it takes to do that. Now, Faster Saves Lives is a very, very specific organization. It Faster stands for Faculty and Administrator Safety and Training and Emergency Response. They will do not just um, firearms education for a teacher who wants to know this. They will do medical training and understand and have the ability to show you don't need to be having the gun, you're not doing CQB, close quarters, um, uh, things like that. And I've actually got into several arguments with, with some of the uh, vet bros on this. And it's like teachers are not going out there to, to search out the individual who is causing the problem. The teachers are defending their children's, their students' lives. That's the key. They're not going out and training for that. They're learning how to stay calm. And these are the same, and the, here's something else. Yes, they say for adding more and more onto teachers. The teachers are already doing that when a kid falls, when a kid gets injured, when a kid has a, has a head injury. They're also the same thing when there's a bomb threat to the school. And depending on what part of the country that you're in, you either have earthquake issues, you have um, tornado oh, yeah. issues, Mm. And then you have um, fl Sharks. fast floodings, things like that. There are a lot of other things that are going on too. The difference with Faster Saves Lives, it gives the educator and the administrators the ability to stay calm by having the knowledge on how to respond when there is an emergency. This is not taking the place of the paramedics or the EMTs or the emergency medical professionals. This is starting the life-saving treatment that is needed within the golden hour. Anybody? I'm interrupting, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, and it's offered, I just wanted to 
put in or add to it that it's offered to the instructors in a way that they're familiar with, not like a boot camp or some kind of like we're all going to sit around in a circle and whatever. It's like offered to instruct in, into educators in a format that they're familiar with so that it's, it can be a, 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 um, a absorbed so that it can be digested by them the same way they would a new curriculum for, like you said, uh, emergency re response or mm -hmm. Um, maybe a, a new medical thing like so it's it's not like an alien thing or something that's just going to take teachers out of their realm it's instead catered to educators and like you say faculty administrators and other people again to empower exactly and, and that's a way, way way more than a 20 minute class like yes like yeah. multiple levels and it's an actual and that's the other thing is it's something that they can have as a is it a, like a credential or it's like something that they can have the certificate that they've done it so mm -hmm. that then they teach and people can have that confidence. Cause again, is it, it, people will say, Oh, I don't want to fortify the school. Well, a way to fortify the school is that the general kids know that the teachers are able and whatever the they don't have to flex, They just have to know the teachers are able. And now the kids who are the ones who are usually the thing know that this isn't the place to do that kind of thing. Exactly. Or the individual is not going to, uh, not going to have that for the, for, know to do that the nra also this goes this goes back to the nra the nra also provides a free program to any school who requests it on how to secure that building without fortifying it in the way that oh it's going to turn it into a prison or it's going to turn it into this bleak building no the nra will do that for free to and any then, and it's in a an in a formalized, institutionalized way. So it's not like, well, we're just going to give you this. Like they're, no. they're giving you something that the weight of the NRA's infrastructure in training and safety, mm -hmm. the same way that um, I guess some people may not be familiar, but there's a lot of um, infrastructure in the industry and in the community that's built off the, you know, the basics, which the basics are the old NRA or the basic NRA kind of, you're talking about the four rules. That's about the only yeah. thing out there that isn't NRA. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Only because NRA probably figured out nobody else is doing this and we're able. So let's get mm -hmm. some, some consistency. And then everybody was like, well, I could either rebuild the mousetrap or here's one that works. Let's just use theirs. Exactly. And it, you know, and it's not like it was an engineered thing. It's just that it happened. And this is before the internet. But anyway, getting off topic. No, but actually, I think it's still on topic because it's a valuable thing for somebody you can take to the school board and say, where's, where is this done? Where is the information that shows that my child knows or my child's teacher has this data, has this information, and we know that this school has been set up and we know where the weak points are, we know where the strong points are. Elected officials have to answer to who votes for them. School districts are the smallest of the electoral of the electorate, in the sense that of the elected officials. Coastal um, agencies will have port authorities and things like that that are also elected, but those ports are significantly larger than a school district because a school district is only going to handle a specific number of schools within a community. There's nothing to say that anybody, even if you do not have a child, that you cannot ask during a school board meeting, where is this information? If you are a resident and a taxpayer, and if you rent, you are a taxpayer paying property taxes based upon your rent that your landlord is paying because your rent goes to those property taxes. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise on that. Um, so that's another way of doing this. You can approach it on the safety information for people who getting involved also with doing a booth and having some of the information out there have know who in the area targets firearm safety education for women, targets it for victims of abuse, things like that having something just to hand out and a simple thin paper that can be folded goes through a lot. If somebody asks you for information on what you're doing, it, oh, I'm just doing this for myself because I really care about my, I really care about our community.
community. Don't just say my community, our community. That's an interesting point. Well, I don't get that. What you just mentioned there, you know, keeping in mind that it's this is a, a bigger issue. But the idea that um, you don't have to necessarily be like the sanctioned Walk the Talk America, New Jersey affiliate or the Kansas. I don't know who to pick on. I'll pick on a panhandle. What state has a panhandle? Uh, Nebraska. Florida, um, Oklahoma. So, uh, uh, anyway, so you don't have to be an official advocate, but you can offer some resources. So you could say, like you just said, like we're a group of friends and we just think this is important. We love the fair. We love this like race or something. We like this, you know, gun show so much. So we hang out here, we get a table cause it's helping the community. And then, you know, we must like to see less death. So here's some information mm -hmm. about suicide awareness. You know, remember a lot of these are our veterans and some of those are old guys. Some of those are young guys. Sometimes it's just a, to stop, a, cause a pause, right? Just let them know that there are people out there that they can talk to. All they got to do is now dial 988. And now that person knows a shit ton of stuff that they can walk away and either forget it all or when it's necessary, go, dude, call 988. I don't know what to tell you. You know, like who knows how that can get out there. So Some, you don't have to be an official nothing. You can just correct. be like, let's go have fun this weekend and, and maybe, hey, you guys got a gun shop and you're going to be at the table or at the you're going to have a table at the gun show. Here's what here's what it's like in real life. I don't want to work at the gun show or one guy's like, yeah, I'll work at the gun show. But then every once in a while, it's like I want to go to the bathroom or somebody's like, I don't want to be here in the first place. So you're like, hey, can I show up and hang out at your table and be useful maybe? And then also talk about suicide awareness or talk about, like you said, uh, child safety awareness, mm -hmm. like actual child sa firearm safety or. Uh, I was going to bring up another one, but you know, some aspect or all of the above and just have this available at your table. I mean, I guess some gun shop might be like, blah, blah, blah. But then that gives you an opportunity to advocate for why you should be able to, or why it would be a good idea for them to be the gun shop that it does be the only gun shop in the gun show offering that info and mm -hmm. how awesome that is. And bring it up, not, and not just the gun shows. Look to your farmer's markets look to your art fairs look to your non-standard location where you can reach the individual who is not part of the 2a community who the antis are reaching based upon the commercials that are being paid for by the multi-billionaires be there answer the questions and i will put this out to anybody who is in western washington I've said this before, I am willing to mentor. I am willing to help and show and educate the data and the way to approach individuals on this. Um, like we've said, like I've said others on some other stuff, I just physically, because of my health, cannot be a point person anymore. But I am more than willing to mentor and to help provide the advice to help get stuff set up if somebody else wants to do this. There are a number of organizations that will do this. If you find out that there's a farmer's market not far from you or a community market or even the state or the county fair, find out what is it. You may not be able to do it this year. That's understandable. We're getting towards the end of summer. Some of these fairs and everything else these are picked up early on, um, sometimes a year ahead of time. So, and exactly for the food banks, you're volunteering. If any of you, are, if any individuals who are vet veterans, sometimes they are willing to waive the fee of the individuals who are going there if you're veterans to promote safety, you want to be, and, and that's the whole thing is you're not promoting the second amendment. You're promoting education. You're promoting firearm safety. You're promoting being a situational awareness so that you don't have someone who is elderly get injured or stabbed like in San Francisco, like some, several of the times in San Francisco you have that information so that people are like the same way you approach it that i love my community i want my community to be 
having the armed with the safety and educational materials to make a choice in what they do. A lot of people also don't realize the Second Amendment protects less than lethal weapons. Your stun guns, your tasers, your um, the batons, all of that is protected under the Second Amendment. Knives are protected under the Second Amendment. Make sure that somebody who has that information, oh, I don't want a gun. That's fine. We totally understand. Learn how to safely operate or pick it up so that you don't harm somebody. If you want to have the ability to defend yourself and you don't want a firearm, here are some resources that you can use to defend yourself. That is really how to, when it comes down to it, affect change within the community to defend all our rights. Because again, the second protects the first, the first protects everything else. Yeah, DJ Play Nice, that's a good way of saying it. It's about being a solid citizen and to really make sure that people have that stuff. Who's to say that um, you can go through and help somebody by providing that little bit of detail. Washington State actually has codified less than lethal self-defense. Not many people know that. Have that information. If you know of dojos of who do BJJ, have that information. Oh, you don't want to carry a firearm? Here's a great resource for judo or for Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Reach out to them. They may have a class to help you learn how to defend yourself. You're interested in situational awareness so that you know how to be safe when you're walking to your car or this or that. There are f firearms instructors, as an example, here in Western Washington, adventure protection systems. Um, he's also involved with the Washington Civil Rights a or Association. Curtis does a eight-hour class, feeds the women coffee, lunch, starts them off and goes into situational awareness for an eight hour class. He does that um, once a month, sometimes twice a month on a Saturday is a big thing that he does with this, but he makes sure that the women are comfortable. He has taught victims of domestic violence, of stalkers, um, rape victims, along with his wife and his daughter, how to defend yourself. I would not be surprised if in any individual within a, one of the 50 states, there is somebody there who does this, even within New York, even within California. California, within Pasadena, there's Redstone Firearms. I thought you were talking about triggerology a minute ago. That's what you <laughs> were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. He does a lot of good classes, too. This is the thing. Know who actually does the classes. Um, Perfectus, Ken from Perfectus Group does a lot in the southeast of this country. Um, you've got Marshall, Marshall Williams who travels throughout the south into Texas and sometimes up into the Midwest does classes specifically for uh, black and native women. That's key. It's important. It's not being divisive. It's not segregating. People are comfortable when it comes to self-defense if the person who's teaching that class looks like them because they understand what that individual is going through when it comes to being catcalled, when it comes to being targeted because you're a woman because you're a mi minority or a marginalized community. Those things matter. And it's not being decisive. It's making sure that those individuals are comfortable 
and feel comfortable in getting the valuable education that they need so that they know that they are welcome with our incredible 2A community. And the majority of the antis are your very white, progressive, wealthy women. Those who are your leaderships. The ones who follow that are going to be the ones whose kids are no longer well, at home. Without getting too far into that one, because <laughs> I get paid by Bloomberg to stop you from talking about anything over there. So we're kind of talking about how to be a Second Amendment advocate. I want to throw this as you start to approach that, if you're down for continuing this, because this is kind of yeah. another whole topic. The antis, right, exist. Mm -hmm. And what you're about to talk about there, I think I interrupted you as you were kind of, kind of, you know, focusing on kind of uh, some aspects of them. But what I don't see anywhere on our side is any kind of an examination or tally or what's the word like, except for mom at arms, who does a little bit of focus on Shan Chan and she'll, you know, they'll do some specific research, but then they'll also echo they'll handpick all the good stuff that's like Shan Shan doing weird stuff or like whatever. And there's some people that what's is the kid from Florida gets on their nerves. So they'll got you. That disgrace of a pure brat. But you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's that, but aside from that, there's nothing that pays attention to how much are they spending? How much is the media giving them in value and a time and attention compared with, any other message really like compare it with the amount of messaging against tobacco smoking or the amount of messaging against like don't slip in the bathroom or something you know just any kind of research on the antis or how much are like i know that something that brooke has mentioned is in her experience recently uh going to live to testimonials and being there and watching them is the core cor the choreographed mm -hmm. i don't know if that's right word, but like the or the the theater and the way that they're using certain words and stuff. And, and we've seen that a lot, but oh, I yeah. know that there has been effort in the past, oh, to attack tobacco or to attack drunk driving. Like there's been efforts in the past where people will scrutinize their opponents and nobody really scrutinizes. Like you're about to talk about, you know, some aspects of it, but we don't have an organization that's goal is to, like there's antis have one against the NRA. It tries yeah. to expose and x-ray makes these weird stuff about everything the NRA does. And that's literally all we've got because nothing on our side examines the NRA short of um, the one in Colorado, 2A.org. I think, no, it's 2AO, whichever of the two. Yeah, 2AO. Are, the, yeah. 2AO is the one that, is it? I believe it is because they've got. Sides, they do the podcast. Yeah. And that follow kind of what the NRA is doing without just constantly being snarky or mm -hmm. bagging on them. But on the other hand, uh, I didn't want to get too far out of there other than to say, let you continue on what you're about to say about specifically Bloomberg's whole thing. I think you were about to talk about Bloomberg's whole thing. Part of but, it is, uh, part of it is with Bloomberg and part of it is it's not just Bloomberg, but it is all of the groups that are on the antis gathering up some of this information is not an easy thing. I know when I did the expose on several of the individuals that are tied with the Levi Strauss um, corporation, whether within the board, going into Panera, going into who owns what and everything else, that was a good 60 hours worth of research. It is not an easy thing to do when you have only maybe one or two people to do it. Um, and this is for somebody who is very much interested in data analytics and who has the time and the wherewithal to start diving through. The documentation required is extensive. Um, this is more than just screenshots. This is documenting as a citation, as if you are doing a scientific report to see who is doing what, where the funding is coming from and how the stuff is coming through. You have people who are complaining about the, the whole thing with some of these um, uh, pandemics and epidemics and things like that, that the CDC has dropped the ball. Well, the CDC has dropped the ball because the CDC has been using public health as a way of denying and, and attacking the Second Amendment uh, by using gun violence. And the reason why they use gun violence as the terminology is because they can look at the fire and fatalities and then they can actually look at the hard numbers of how many people who are um, 
injured uh, through crossfire, through uh, friendly fire, or through um, violence that's caused by drug and gang. When I say drug and gang, I do not mean specific minorities. G drugs and gangs are aware of everything. It's across the board. You have, it does not matter with your race, your creed, or your heritage is. There are gangs and there are drug um, drug uh, users that are within the violence that do that on that. So it is something to be aware of. And anybody who says, oh, you're just attacking somebody who's black or who's brown, saying, no, I'm not, because this is this is not just a racial thing that's causing this, because it is also um, how... Uh, that the crime is across the board. Crime happens within racial subsets. That is a known fact, even down to serial killers. That data has been there for over 40 years. It is, it is verifiable through the UCR. It's verifiable through several other reports. So when you've got people who are talking about the different things and saying like, well, I'm looking at this report here where it says um, uh, defensive gun uses don't exist. If they, and I can never remember this guy's name, and it's not Hemingway, it's the other one. Um, they walked back those studies because in those studies, they had like click. Yeah, something like that. Black. But it's not John Lott, but John Lott called him out. And uh, what this was is that they were using firearms. They were counting firearms in the home as firearms that were brought in by the criminals. And that's the language that they were using against victims of domestic violence saying a gun in the home is dangerous for her. So that is one of the, one of the things to attack. There are multiple studies, including the CDC's 2017 study during the Obama, was that during the Obama administration? No, 2012 or 2013. There's a CDC study that states that defensive firearm use is estimated between 50,000 and two and a half million times a year where the fire, where the firearm, reason why I'm saying a firearm, because it could be a rifle, a handgun, a shotgun, or any other type of firearm, we're using a defensive gun use. Know that. When someone says like, well, all you care about are, you don't care about the dead kids. Depending on who you're talking with, look at them and say like, that is a disgusting thing to say. Of course I care about the children, which is why I support Faster Save Lives. Walk the Talk America. Um, Kids Safe Foundation things like that. Throw it back that you are active in supporting the groups that are there to educate and prevent firearm accidents. What are they doing? Oh, they're just doing the stuff with moms? What is that? That's not do actually doing something. Well, to they are. They're, they're demanding and if they got accomplished their goal, they would demand that one dangerous item be removed from some people. Or maybe one dangerous item be removed from everybody's possession. And then they've accomplished removing the one dangerous item. Now that yeah. dangerous item allows a smaller victim to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. But they don't, you know what I mean? Like They, they don't they get, like to address that. And yeah, they're not acknowledging that part. And that's, well, and, I guess that's another thing. But we were talking about antis here. But right. It, it, so, and that's one of the ways to address the antis. It's like, great. Then, if you want to remove all the firearms, are you going to remove them from law enforcement? Since law enforcement shoots more than shoots more individuals who are innocent than your concealed pistol holders. That is a verifiable fact from the FBI from the Universal Crime Report. Um, they have that date. That is a hard data that you can look up. Right. But then again, just looking at it from the anti side or from the devil's advocate side. It, so that's a data. But if the police were out pulling their guns, it wasn't just to wreak havoc. The police were pulling their guns because something was going on. So if somebody was a bystander to something going on, they were probably in the wrong place. At least some of them were in the wrong place at the wrong time. So some of those people were standing there adjacent to the people who were you know what I mean? Like, so that's, I'm sure. Tell how that to, okay. Talk. And here's how you address somebody who's a devil's advocate on that. Tell that to the vi innocent victims 
who are shot not knowing that they're in an area where law enforcement is responding. Like you had a situation where a group of NYPD fired over 100 rounds and shot 11 innocent people without hitting the criminal himself. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like if they're, in other words, if they're like, well, a bunch of people needed to get shot and then a whole bunch of people were crowding around these people that needed to get shot, like what the hell? They were weren't even people? crowding. That knowing the type of situations where shootings like that from law enforcement have happened is key so that you can address that type of question. And here's a great way to be a Second Amendment advocate. And G-Webs, you brought it up very well. Know your counter argument know your counter argument, know how to defend, know how to be the anti, know how to be the gun control supporter, know their arguments inside and out, know what they write, know what their data is, be able to defend their position. By being able to defend their position with a I'd say understand understand their position because some of their positions are dumb, but you're not, you can understand them. Like if you were against violence and somebody said, here's a magic wand and you can just be against violence and they're going to be like, hell yeah, wave that magic wand. Like it's not, you know, okay. They didn't know that magic wands don't exist, but you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. you don't have to believe in magic wands, but you can understand that they didn't realize and all that. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah. Understand where they're coming from. And have that. But if if you're getting into the weeds of being a two A defender, know what their arguments are, know how to defend, know how to defend their position. If you defend their position, your own position as a two A advocate, as a two A community individual, is even stronger, because you will know how to answer anything that they are going to be bringing up. It will not be something quick. It will take time to learn everything. For me to be able to answer some of the questions and everything else when we had, when I was doing the boots with the Seattle Tacoma Pink Pistols, it took me two and a half years of constant talking and legislation committee hearings and things like that to know how to respond to specific questions without having to look up the data. And when I was saying like, I'm not sure about this, but I think you can find the information here, here, and here. And there were times I would have sheets printed up like, oh, you can reference it here. Yeah, and see, here's where where you can see that the CDC states X, Y, and Z. Here's where you can see Wicker stating this type of information here based upon these specific parameters that you enter into Wickers to get the results to see what's going on. That will take time. This is not for somebody who's new at this. And I chop into here because that's what I'm trying to do with Minuteman is chop that time down. So we're standing on each other's shoulders. That should be a freaking handbook that at any level, a cartoon book, a handbook, a comic book, a graphic novel, a bunch of videos, and then some in-depth nerds talking about it. But that should be accessible. Every level of what we're talking about education wise. Yeah. In other words, if you can get, uh, to where you're up to speed with whatever it is you're interested in advocating, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we talk about quite a bit when people say like, oh, well, I'll just call 911. Don't just bring up Warren v. D.C. Because when people hear D.C., they hear the District of Columbia and they think that's just the district. That's the federal. No um, DeShaney versus Winnebago. No Castle Rock v. Gonzalez, no Bowers v. DeVito, which was cited in McDonald v. Chicago. So the last actual 2A case before this most recent one was McDonald v. Chicago. And that took what happened in Heller and put it to the country. Because the D.C. is a district. It's a federal district. A lot of the states we're stating that because that was specific, Heller was specific into D.C., it was not applicable under the 10th or the 14th Amendment to be to the states. McDonald v. Chicago and the subsequent is Mrs. L. v. Chicago took that, 
10th and 14th Amendment and put it to the states because they were both out of local jurisdictions within the city of Chicago, within the state of Illinois. Vital so information. To say that Heller uh, applied to D.C. and then Miller applied Heller, the Miller decision was the, the, the subsequent uh, Supreme Court case that came down pro Second Amendment. McDonald. Miller Sorry. was Miller was a couple decades earlier. So yeah, Mil Sorry, McDonald's, McDonald's. So McDonald's, Heller, yes. Heller said we that's the individual, no more anything else. It's the individual that has a right to own the firearm and that possess it. And then with some stuff. And that's where everybody's like, oh, it's, it's with some stuff. So then McDonald comes along and uh, the, the way that you summarized it, taking it out of D.C. and applying right. it to the states is awesome. How would you take the Ezel cases and describe, summarize those? Because I'm trying to desperately to do that same thing, and you did it way faster than I did. <laughs> Ezel, Chicago had a had a specific ruling stating that you, in order to be able to get a permit and get your FOID or get the card, so you had to have training. In Chicago, there are no locations close by within a reasonable distance that offer training within firearms. So it was Ezel was like you can't create a catch twenty two where you Correct. ask for, so yeah you, so uh, Heller said individuals not the state has the right the, the individual has the right to possess with some limits and then McDonald says okay states it's not just in D C so get over that glitch and then Ezel was you can't create these ten twenty two situation or catch twenty two ten twenty two catch twenty two situations. You where, can't mandate training where it's, when where there's it's, no facility available. Right. And then now we just had uh, whatever versus Ellen, or not, Bruin or versus, versus New York State, State Rifle, Rifle, Rifle and Pistol, Pistol Association. Yes. And, and then it says, um, dang, now I'm all screwed up. What <laughs> that's okay. I'll let you think about it. I'm going to address M. Gabriel's um, comment. So Katiano founded that it's not just new weapons covered by the Second Amendment in 2016. Katiano said that less than lethal that are in common use, and this is any weapon that's in common use, and the number that is specific within Katiano v. Massachusetts is 200,000. So when they talk about in common use, they're talking about a number that's 200,000. So they're talking about how and this particular one was a woman who did not want to use lethal force against her ex-husband for self-defense because she did not want to traumatize her ch their children. Um, so that was a domestic violence case. Massachusetts says, no, you cannot have the taser, the stun gun. I can't remember which one it was. Um, said you cannot have it. It's not covered under the Second Amendment. Um, Supreme Court said, no, it is go back rem and they remanded it the same way that they're doing with the Bruin decisions right now through um, uh, the magazine capacity and the assault weapons ban out of California and several of the other states. They've thrown that stuff back to the district courts. This one particular one was sent back to Massachusetts and said, no, you need to review it on this. Less than lethal are still weapons. Weapons are arms. Arms are protected under the second amendment. So it was totally okay. So that's what McBruin basically says now that I'm thinking about it, right? Is that the strict scrutiny that you it's not some the greater good of everybody, correct? Can the right, a right is a right, you can yes. only look at old Text, fashioned history. And the third item is just as key it's 200,000 within the United States, and this is the key part when it comes to the assault weapons ban and things like that. There was actually a Another case out of New York that's not the Bruin versus New York City, New York State Pistol and Rifle Association, and this was on nunchucks. And this was an individual who wanted to use a nunchuck, not a firearm, also for self-defense. This particular individual brought it always up through the circuit, the district courts, and it was decided the number of common use on that particular one was 50,000 within the United States. So they've dropped that number even further since Katiana was, deci Katiana was deci decided on that. These are critical numbers and critical cases to know.
You will have the antis using these and trying to say that, oh, Scalia was talking about, yes, you can limit. Well, read the entire decisions um, on this. Scalia has said, as long as you are limited within due process. That's where the limitations on the Second Amendment and on the rest of the on the rest of the human rights that are codified in the Bill of Rights for this. So once you have been convicted of a crime that is a felony that meets the specific issues on the removal of an individual's Second Amendment rights, that is under due process. It is supposed to be restored as soon as the sentence is done, but I believe it, it's the Gun Control Act in the 1960s that changed that out and also um, and put it so that once you've been convicted of a felon, you have to petition to have your Second Amendment rights restored. Individuals will try to say Scalia said for the limitations. No, he said limitations within due process. Very specific. Um, there are individuals who are on Twitter who will quote that very specific and will show that people are jumping from one paragraph that Scalia wrote in, that, in one of those decisions. To, and this is under Heller. And they jumped over the due process documentation that Scalia was talking about and jumped to the whole thing of the limitations of the Second Amendment of specific areas. And that's within schools as it's currently established as a gun-free zone to protect the children. He is citing current case law. If it comes through that, and this is the whole thing when um, Roe v. Wade and things like that, you have a specific case that makes it all the way up to the Supreme Court through the circuit courts, you could have the gun-free zones eliminated by stating that either the state is required to provide the security by mandating children to be there at any given time um, for education that the, that the federal government's requiring to have happen, that the state and the federal government are required to protect our children. This is the reason why an individual who is in prison is, is to be protected at all costs because they are a ward of the state while they are in prison. Meaning that if somebody kills that particular prison inmate and the state has not established the proper protections to keep that individual from being murdered, the state is responsible for that death. Those are the specific cases of where the state is obligated because there is a special relationship between the individual and the state to be protected. Your politicians who are higher up, say your mayor, your city council, your county council, county council, and your some of your legislators, they are the ones who may may have that special relationship with law enforcement to be entitled to protection by law enforcement at any given time. Exactly, Gabriel, the state assumes duty of a care under that special relationship. Prison, foster care children, the state is assuming and the state has the duty of care. So why does this matter with the Second Amendment? When you have individuals who say, just call the police, we all know within our discussions that, this, that the police are not obligated. Oh, but on TV it says protect and serve. That's a marketing term. That was a marketing term established during the, I want to say, within the 1960s and 70s by the same individual who established SWAT, Dwight something, who was with LAPD from the Rampart Division. If anybody is from the Los Angeles area, you know how horrific the Rampart Division has been historically. That is where you've had the majority of your abuses from the Los Angeles Police Department against the minority communities and the marginalized communities within the um, within that community. So this is knowing the text history of how these laws, how these bills, how Everything affects our Second Amendment. 
And I know I dropped a lot of shit tonight. No, that's kind of neat. I'm trying to keep notes and stuff, so I kind of lost in some of that stuff. But the last part, because I was trying to write down the 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 uh, whatever the what am I trying to say? The uh, Supreme Court stuff. But mm -hmm. that uh, that's actually pretty interesting too. Well, obviously it's interesting, but it's interesting because I haven't seen anybody address it. Now I'm not saying I've watched everything, but or seen everything. So some of you may have. But there's certainly a bunch of things that happen between the police and the people of L.A. specifically mm -hmm. that definitely bled to the rest of the country, as yes. you can see through any measure you want. And another thing to focus on is, that's getting a sidetrack, but any, any measure you want, crime, medical, uh, drugs, uh, culture, you know, pop culture, everything, like everything out there fashion like come on so the the what their interaction and then the the uh the saturation from that experience has been influential to a lot of things mm -hmm. and then the emulation and the oh, i don't even know the right words for it but like again that permeates or saturates around and I don't know if anybody's ever done like some kind of cool, I guess, vice. I don't know if vice is cool or not now, but you know, some sort of like cool grassroots documentary about it. Somebody who can actually go to the individuals who would have something to actually offer and then, you know, talk to cops, talk to people, talk to people in prison or something, talk to families affected, talk to doctors, but like actually have insight, not just, uh, catchphrases and stuff but anyway that would be i haven't seen anything like that because there's been so many times that stuff that happens specifically in la between police and the people that they're dealing with mm -hmm. wherever it happens to be at this time frame yeah in well, super, and then you got reagan and all that so mm -hmm. when you have large population centers large population centers will influence cultural and political as well as societal changes. Um, then, do you think it's because they had Hollywood there? or if, It's or partially it's because of Hollywood. Hollywood. It's partially because of how the news media and things like that, where um, we don't have royalty in our country. So the Hollywood has become the substitute of the royalty to like, oh, look at the pretty people, look at the fancy stuff that they're wearing. And it inspires individuals who are, and this is the one thing that's very unique within our country on some of the stuff, is if you work hard or if you do something, or if, even if you're lucky and you get out to Hollywood and you get found, like um, several actresses were found in the 1950s sitting at a soda shop and things like that to be able to uh and they were found as an actress and became a famous actress grace kelly is another example of that somebody who was an actress who became a princess that all is followed because it gives inspiration it's like if i do this and i work hard or i look at this and i do that and i do these actions that may be me and that's where culture and seeing the stuff on the media changes culture and the culture changes politics and society so um there's a lot that goes on with this honestly this would be a great thing for the daily wire to look into on that as well as maybe um tim pool's organization um because he's also trying to do trying to change culture and trying to get stuff out there in ways of information and other stories and things like that honestly i think the daily wire is the only one who has the staff right now to be able to do that type of research to be able to do that type of work in the filming the editing the communicating getting all of the releases because one of the things on something like this when you're interviewing people for a movie or a documentary or something like that, you've got to get releases from every single person and you have to get them to cover not just the original format that you're doing this, but on any future formats. Otherwise, you're going to be restricted. A big example on this is the animated film from the mid 1980s called Heavy Metal. This was right at the time, right before video recorder, video uh, VCRs and everything else came out. They didn't realize the movie did okay in the theater, it didn't do great, but it became a cult classic. And they couldn't release it out onto video 
onto the uh, the video cassettes on the um, on the things like that for home because they did not have the music rights cleared in the original contracts and i think that took probably about 15 years to get that done so there's a lot that goes on within marketing within media that's behind the scenes and so yes it would be great to have this done but there's a lot of data that has to be done and if you're citing somebody's very specific personal work or interviewing them on something like that you better make sure that you've got a release uh, the model release or the information release or something like that to be able to use that interview to be able to use that um film in a documentary or in a movie or even as advertising for the documentary this is the reason why when somebody is interviewed on the news for a specific live event if they do not get that person's permission to use them further on later on for marketing and for advertising they can't the news the news station can be sued for um they can use it for news at that time they cannot use it for marketing there are specific contracts that must be filed and must clearances that must be signed off on this stuff when it comes to marketing and for advertising and for anything Is that that's like because the person has to be at that point an actor and they should be compensated as like the otherwise all actors part of it yes and then so it's like they have to because they have to like they can't yes. just Slide you on can't it. just use it. It's partially, it's like, you can't have that individual stating that, um, oh, I support this reporter for this and that, and they're going through this. And then they have that individual being clipped, s stating support for something else. So that has to be confirmed. Now, if you were in walking through the streets and everything else, or as part of a ticket stub and things like that, the purchasing and the use of that ticket stub for the concert, for the sporting event, et cetera, gives the event holder the permission to use your likeness in whatever kind of advertising and things like that. It's in the fine print. And this comes down to everything else. Everything is always in the fine print. Know what you're signing. Know what you're um, uh, giving away. Know what you're receiving. State laws are different for artwork for managing for advertising and for marketing so it's not just federal and this comes under ip uh, intellectual property law it's not just under federal it is also under state and depending on where you are it can even go under some of the international laws of what's going on where does this matter if you are at an event where like say you are say you decided to establish a booth at a food market and you have individuals who are causing problems creating a scene and everything else be polite don't yell at them let them be obnoxious unless they start destroying everything that you're going for one of the things that's very key on doing an event like this whether it's through a gun show whether it's through a farmer's market etc if you have paid for the booth you are a client and a customer of the event holder. They're responsible to make sure that individuals who are going through that particular event have free access to the information or to the product that you are providing. So this goes into knowing what the rules are, knowing what the laws are, knowing what the regulations are. Um, why is that important? Because you will have antis stand in front of you stand in front of your booth with signatures for gun control bills i've had it happen i've had it happen in other words if <clears throat> if you're effective and then they do something like that then you don't necessarily have to you're not alone in your uh solution to that Correct. that you can bring the people that you're for working with mm -hmm. to to help with that and if they don't know it you can say hey you're you're supposed to help me with this and then correct if Hold not, then contract you know, breach of contract yeah. this is where contract law and everything else going into tort going into a lot of that stuff really matters if the event is something similar and i'll use the example of pride pride events are picked and the permits are issued on a first amendment uh on a first amendment basis meaning that the permit is not because of sailing or for um 
uh, farmers markets or something like that. It is a First Amendment right that these people are picking the permit up to have an event in a specific area that for some individuals, yes, it is controversial even now. But here's the caveat. If that event uses the First Amendment to pull the permit for their event, they can not legally refuse anybody a spot for a booth, especially when it is a political message. This is where knowing what your First Amendment is, is key in protecting your second and vice versa. I have had permits pulled because an organization denied the chapter a booth permit. Well, it sounds like then just to bring it kind of tether it back to the goal of the conversation, kind of the root or whatever would be, it sounds like then having some resource available in addition to the how to be active in the state or, you know, how to be effective with your advocacy at a state there in the political arenas would be how to deal with like that. So a, a set of resources that are like, uh, maybe not FAQ, but like people's experiences and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe something like a searchable database or whatever the words are to make it fancier than database. But, you know, so that if someone is encountering like a forum, you know, like somebody's mm -hmm. encountering something like that, I'm having an issue at a whatever. I don't want to repeat everything. You just I'm said, having but, an issue getting a permit so that we would have yeah. a booth to be able to provide. So, you're not alone, so that you don't mm -hmm. have to necessarily study for that, but you know, you've got a place where you can get that. And that can either be, I think, you know, that's easy enough for either someone who's really interested in, you know, accomplishing that or just uh, add it to some organization and make it one of their sub pages and just offer it as one of their services or one of the things that they can provide. Mm -hmm. It is. And it really, on some of the stuff, it depends on for some of these things, people, some of these organizations have legal requirements of what they can and cannot provide. If somebody wants to look for someone else to do this, realize that the big organizations that we've named already may not be able to legally do this. You as an individual, me as an individual, can gather information up, see what we're able to find, footnote things, endnote things, show cross-references, show the links. I'm finding this, this, and this. If you're showing this, is that this is what the information that I'm finding out. Please let me know that this, is, that this information is correct, that this information is still valid. This is how I, in my work, in my opinion, I get things done. Know when to use facts, knows as as hard facts, know when to use opinion. They you kind of mentioned that before with I mean, we were, were addressing like dealing with the politicians or whatever, but I think one of the things that I didn't want to interrupt you before, but I'm interrupting you now, I guess, is um <laughs> I noticed that from my experience watching these testimonials and stuff is every once in a while they'll say, I like to add this to the record. Or once in a while they'll hold up some stapled pieces of paper and go, according to this, blah, 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 on the record, this. So what you're doing in effect is here's my five minute elevator speech or my five, my five minutes, my 28 words or less, like you said. And then here's the, then, you know, here's my 28 words or less to give you my position. Here's what I got to back it up if that gets through, if it absorbs, now they've got something to take with them yes. to hold up and say into the record, I'm going to hold it up and wave it around. Yes. Okay. And this is the reason why knowing, and pretty much at this point, and as far as I'm aware, every single state has an individual to a group that is working with the state legislature, working in the education, working on providing firearm safety education. To be honest, if there's not one in your state, 
establish one. Just getting started may get other people involved who can help out and help build on what's trying to be done. I know Colorado, oh, yeah. is, Colorado is heavily fighting right now against the gun control laws that they have. And from doing maps and stuff, just some projects, there are a couple of places where there's like a lack of national mm -hmm. level or state level, excuse me, state level focused to a stuff specifically other than like maybe a rifle association, mm -hmm. which is more like typically marksmanship and facilitating some kind of competitions or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or maintaining range standards and upkeep and that kind of thing. But, uh, I think what you'd find is like you say, if you, if someone were to start something, what they'd find is backers would come flying because often it's not the lack of interest. It's just the lack of someone who's able to jump up and start doing something. Mm -hmm. But once there is someone there, then everybody who was waiting for that can then say, okay, here's focus time and resources and whatever's needed to mm -hmm. make it successful. And then people start joining because unless there's an organization, there's nothing to join. So, right. Yeah. Thing, the, the catalyst that starts it all so you don't necessarily have to be like oh i can't manage all that well you don't need to manage all that like you just have to right. get it started and then all the mm -hmm. people show up and then you're going to get people that go hey step aside you suck at this and then boom you let it <laughs> you, you let it go right boom, exactly no know when to swallow your pride no i mean assuming we're talking to that person some people are like oh no i want to run it like go run it then you know, yeah there are run it, let it go but realize that if you run it and it falls flat, you're taking the responsibility on it. And um, no, I'm okay with that. I think we learn from people failing and doing stuff. I mean, there's that's how we, you know, guns evolve and everything. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Like, definitely try it. If you suck, then you're not going to get much support. If you are awesome and you should have won, but you didn't, then the next person is going to win, learn from that. Not necessarily win, but learn from that. Uh, yeah. We're not guaranteed nothing. Liberty requires eternal vigilance. That means yes. that. There's going to be like times when we are just winning and then everyone will sit back and, it, you know, the people that won will not get every uh, facet of that to the next generation and then stuff will get forgotten. And then eventually the other side will go, you know, why do we have these laws? And then we'll be fighting again. So that's exactly just, what happened here in Washington state. Washington state used to be very pro to a state preemption which the state laws preempt all the county all the city and any other kind of the local jurisdictions and pushing gun control was started in washington we were the first state that had state preemption because people weren't paying attention or didn't realize some of the stuff that was going on people age out people die people retire etc that's when we started getting these bills first it was the uh uniform background checks 594 that got passed through a voters initiative after we were able to prevent that from being pushed through the state legislature then with 1639 anybody who's in washington state understands what 1639 is this is a conglomeration of technically what should be 30 bills or 30 initiatives was done under one. There was a lot of issues, legal issues still going on with that particular case and the fighting of it, but each portion of the 30 units has to be fought individually. We had stopped every single one of those uh, aspects of that voter initiative during that legislative session, thinking that that's the only thing we had to worry about. They were blindsided when 1639 hit the ballot. There were individuals who were signature gatherers who were lying to the people about the signatures to get the to get the initiative on the ballot. Then you had the specific politicians paying for the time, paying for the programs, not as advertisements, and that's key to gain access to run um, the position to vote for 1639. We have been playing catch up since. Only this past year in 2022 did any portion of the next remaining mass major gun control get passed. And that was the magazine capacity bill. And that had been fought for seven. This was the seventh year that it had been submitted. 
they're willing to do this year in, year out, every single time. Yes, it gets tiring. It gets draining. No one to tap, no when to tap out, no one to pass the baton on to the next group who can help. And that's partially what GWEBS is doing here and getting me on talking way too much um, with how to pass that information on. I would still be doing what I had been doing for the last near 10 years if it wasn't for a medical condition. Well, one of my projects <clears throat> is to archive where we come from, right? So that mm -hmm. we can, so I always say like, so that everybody could, should be able to stand on each other's shoulders. If they're, you know, if somebody's okay with you standing on their shoulders and most people are, then, you know, do more than we did kind of thing. So first you got to know where, what happened and, and you got to start somewhere. But um, uh, once you've got that, then you can start strategy, right? Then you can start figuring out, um, well, hopefully once we start seeing as clear a picture as possible of where we stand, we'll mm -hmm. see some, some gaps potentially too, but then we can also start coming up with uh, um, better and better uh, Effect, more effective conversation mm -hmm. and i think that well i don't want to get into it, uh get into a tangent but uh we have been talking for a while and i appreciate you sticking around because i know that uh for your situation being up at night is the norm so this is <laughs> uh, uh, yes you're awake some people i keep awake so it's not so much that i'm keeping you awake but i appreciate your time I don't yeah. want to hog too much of it because we will. No, it's not a problem. It's not, you know, it's never a problem on these Mondays that we schedule for this because I know that these conversations can go because I can go on many, many, many tangents. Well, um, I, I think this is hopefully useful because, uh, well, I don't have to explain it to the people that are listening because you're either listening live and you're enjoying it or you're listening to this later and you understand. But uh, well, the next time we chat, um, unless somebody's got something else, we'll just get right into advance. So we'll kind of do the same thing, but could this time we kind of tethered around uh, someone wants to be an activist. Next mm -hmm. time let's tether around, you've been an activist for a while and you've taken the training wheels off. Cause um, I'm going to ask you four, um, I'm going to call them lightning rounds, but we can be as lightning as we want. It can be a slow thunder if it needs to be. Um, or I was, uh, I'm trying to, what? Uh, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. Let me type. Uh, so I'm going to ask you four questions to wrap it up. And like I say, I'm going to call them lightning round, but they're four questions just so that we know that there's a there is an end in sight. Yes. But I'm not also rushing you out of the door either. So the first <laughs> question is, so take as long as you'd like, in other words. There'll be four of them, though. The first one is, should there be 2A music or would that be a waste of time? Yes. Okay. And you, if you want to keep going, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll go to the next one. Can you know too much about 2A to where you're no longer effective communicator or no longer able to, you know, to get a point across? If you are diving in too much of the weeds, realize that another individual may be able to point that out to you, that you're too much into the weeds, too much into the, the minutia, into the details of everything that's going on. This is where having a two minute talking point, five minute talking point for specific individuals. If you really get heavy into the weeds, set that up. You're talking to somebody who is a grandmother who is grandmothers against guns or grandmother because um, they do exist. Uh, and somebody who is a young teenager who thinks that they have, that the government's supposed to protect them because I've always been told that I will be protected by the police. Go through and if you're on Twitter, see some of the arguments that are going on with gun control. If you're on TikTok, see what some of the arguments are for and against. If you're on um, the news, watch the news. Use that as a way to distill your message. Like to understand the extract of theirs? The extract of theirs and the extract of how you need to reply to them. Or make a statement that they will have a more difficult time in responding that doesn't look like they're the crazy one. Yeah, see, I'm a, we're going to have a conversation about that because I think there's some strategy to say, 
I don't think there's any strategy to counter their argument, but I think there's some strategy to give them a question and then leave them to answer it themselves if they choose, because then they go find out the answer and they go, oh, wait a minute, that challenge is my, my side here. And then the other would be like to cite stuff and, and give it to them. Cause some people are going to be like, I need the site. I need the, I need the ref, I need the resource mm -hmm. or the link to this. Other people are going to be like, I won't believe this until I find it out myself. Correct. And that's where I, I'm kind of like, you, you got to know the person perhaps, or know this, be able to differentiate the same way. Oh, I'm going to shoot, uh, lead this critter cause it's running or I'm not going to lead this critter cause it's sitting there just, you mm -hmm. know, Two different ways we're going to shoot or maybe not critter if you're not a hunter like i'm going to shoot this target because it's moving or i'm going to not lead this target because it's not moving you know we're going to know our opponent know the difference this is, for what you're saying this is definitely know who you're talking to know who's listening around know the platform in which you are engaging if you need to and you're working on something for being able to do citations and being able to, if you have a lot of the stuff within the weeds, there are several free programs. Avoid Google, if and all, all po uh, avoid Google, if at all possible, because your data will be edited. That has been proven. It is known. There are um, items that you can, uh, apps and everything else that you can use. Several of them are free. Some of them are not. Some of them are private where Google has no fingers at all into it. One of the things is Evernote. Evernote, if you are talking with somebody and things like that, you can have multiple notebooks set up with hard archivable, web archivable links, going to specific data, going to PDFs, going to other data, going to um, other information, other websites that will answer the questions that you have. Use that in concert with the other social media platforms if you're using social media for your discussions. Also have it in the sense that you have the ability to answer somebody for this. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about here. This was related, this information on how many people were actually shot. Oh, all those school shootings aren't that because they're the, the GVA is counting suicide by adults in the parking lot after hours or gang violence that's happening on the street outside the school during school sessions that's not in the school itself. That's the type of information that you can have on Evernote. That's the type of information you can have within Dropbox. That's the type of information you can have saved within notes or notepads and things like that um, where you can address having that information within the weeds. Yes, have your two minute, your five minute. You may have a lot of the stuff within the with a lot of your data where you're like um, heavy into the details. Sort that information in a way that you can access it quickly, rapidly to be able to provide it to somebody. Oh yeah, here's the information. Oh, what's your email? And I'll send this link to you. That's one of the ways to address that. Sorry, I got distracted. I do have a poll going just for the hell of it. <laughs> Would you rather fight, what did I put? Uh, 50,000 robot ninjas, each with its own set of nunchucks, or one robot with 50,000 nunchucks. So I don't know if you think that's a robot with 50,000 arms or some endless supply of nunchucks that could wing at you, but either way. Is this like the know. duck versus the horses, the giant duck? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um... That's not one of the four questions, but I put that up. <laughs> It's, uh, and people, the way it works on YouTube, we talk about this once in a while, but on YouTube, you go to it and then it asks you the question. It doesn't show you the results. You you don't get the results until you answer. So yeah. unless you're doing some kind of jumping around or watching me share my screen or something, people just answer and then they figure out if they are whatever. So it was until recently, well, until just a moment ago, all the votes were for one robot with 50,000 nunchucks. I'm going to agree with that because that's a lot easier to disable than 50,000 robots with with individual. Yeah, exactly. But they would have to be one. Of, I should have put one at a time. You don't get enough time, thing on here to give it a like enough yeah. scenario. Anyway, so just having a little fun there because we are a long chat. But again, this was 
real 2A for people that are looking for stuff that's real 2A. And again, thanks to our Patreons. 148 people make it possible for me to take the time to create this place uh, so that we can have conversations like this and invite uh, Sharon on as often as we can. Um, so the next question is, again, take as long as little as you like because we'll talk about this again in the future for sure. What are the, and I'm going to keep asking this to people, I think from now on is one of my closing questions. What are our gaps in the 2A community in 2022? What are our gaps? Yeah, like where are, uh, we, where are we missing right now in 2022? Ego. Individual egos, as well as distractions on federal versus state level. This goes back to your the question of being caught into the weeds. Know what affects your state. Know what affects on the federal level. Know how recent decisions by the Supreme Court actually affect your life. Know that there are individuals who will use some of the other decisions as a way to attack the Second Amendment, even though Bruin was decided the way it was. So gaps that we haven't mastered something about the ego or and that we have, like, when you say distractions, I've been using a lot lately, the can't stop at every bark and dog or you never get where you're going or so, whatever that one is. Is, is he, that what you mean by distraction? Or Part of it, yes. Attention? That's a good way of that's a good way of describing describing it. You can't look at absolutely everything and expect to be effective. You have to prioritize what you, as an individual, as a person who is able to respond to, and for some things to base to to build off of what the cancer mouse says to build off of that where people think everything stays the same um is how to have individuals become caring about their personal safety right now we are have been except for in very very specific communities and very, very specific areas, extremely safe. Crime is still technically at a 30 year low. It spiked up during 2020 and 2021, but it did not spike up to what it was in the seventies. We are not at that point. Having people be able to care about their own personal safety is going to be key on how you get somebody to become more active. This goes into the individuals who believe that the police are there to save their lives, no matter what, have not had a family member wait and wait and wait for the police to show up if they show up at all so that's how to change that getting people caring how do you do that that is interpersonal communication with your two to five minute quick elevator talk my neighbors know that I am with firearms. They also know because the last three years, every Halloween, I hand out information from Forefront Suicide Protection or Kids Safe Foundation information on firearm safety. That goes to every single child in every single candy bag, no matter what. Last year, we had over 125 kids come through. I saw only one of the items that I had handed out 
crumpled up and thrown on the yard. This goes back to what Ogilvy, who is the grandfather of marketing, has to paraphrase what he said. And this goes into marketing of a brick and mortar. For every 1,000 people who walk past your store, one person will look at the window. For every 1,000 people who look at the window, one person will enter the store. For every 1,000 people who enter the store, one person will answer, ask a question. For every 1,000 people who ask a question, one person will make a purchase. Use that as a way to establish people to be able to care about their own personal safety, about education and firearm safety, and also in addressing the biggest portion of firearm fatalities, which is suicide prevention. Having that trifecta as part of your talk is how we can get people to care. There are a lot of people who know somebody, whether family or friends, who have committed or attempted suicide. That is a key aspect and way to approach firearm safety education. Right on. Appreciate that. Uh, throwing these at you. And like I said, I didn't know, I didn't want you to be abbreviated or whatever. So um, I'm attempting to keep some notes. They're going to be bullet points and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the goal here is to have people listen, not necessarily, this isn't a lecture. This is a, yeah. a, a conversation. So then the last actual question, and I'm going to leave all the rest of the questions that I keep wanting to ask. I'll leave yeah. it for other future ones. Uh, we've already chatted about a couple of different books tonight, but can you recommend two more books on the way out that are for the Second Amendment act activist or just a Do you good remember book? which ones I've mentioned before so I don't mention the same one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, the 14th Amendment and its letter. Yes. That one you mentioned, and I think that's the only one, actually. Okay, um, another really good one. Let me see if I can find um, these on there. Is let me see this non. Oops, let me type this up real quick. I suck at spelling today. All right, and this one is a book by the name of an individual of Charles E. Cobb, C. O. B. B. Jr. And this is, the title of the book is, This Nonviolent Stuff Will Get You Killed, How Guns Made the Civil Rights Movement Possible. I'll drop it in the um, chat for UG Web, so this will be the Goodreads link on this. And this is talking about how the firearms were critical for people to be able to defend themselves against law enforcement who were just as bad as the KKK. And, and the, yes, these were Democrats. These were Southern Democrats. No, the flip or the switch or whatever did not happen. We can discuss that at another time. That is one of the first ones that I will say definitely is a key one to have information on the Second Amendment. It is a major one. Um, let me see if I can find, I got them under, I think I have it under politics. Anybody who's curious, my Goodreads account is public. I have a lot of... Oh, so when you've been mentioning Goodreads, one of the things I like to do on Mondays is talk about behind the scenes. I thought that was like an Amazon or something. So is that Amazon what does own... Amazon ended up purchasing it, but it is a database of books that you have read, that you're currently reading, or that you want to read. And you can... It's like a shared books list that you can It's share a shared with. books list and things like that. Um, people will connect to individuals of how they want information on there. 
of what, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, like listing, I have books that I want to read. I use that for the books that I want to read. If I am reading a book, um, depending on which book I'm reading, sometimes they'll cite notations where uh, they have it for um, some of the source material and things like that. Um, I'll use that as a way to determine what else I want to read. Um, so yeah, that's nonviolent stuff will get you killed. That is a major one, and uh, because it really does go into what is what 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 has happened and why firearms are not really talked about when it comes to the civil rights movement because you had individuals within the civil rights movement who did not want individuals to be armed at all whatsoever. Um, let's see if I can find one of the other ones that's really good. Uh, let's see, oops, not there. And I'm actually going through the ones that I've hand read so I can make a um, recommendation from them. Uh, here we go. This is a good one. And this one is from a one of the attorneys with the ACLU in Amnesty International. And this one is, let me get this over to you. This is, it's called the rule of law, the misrule of men. And this goes into the distinction between how law is used to control men and violate rights. This is also one of the books that I've seen that actually goes into where, um, and she has another one up too that I've read that's really, really um, uh, also really good. So I'll put this third one in also. And this is an excellent one to read also. And this one's called Thinking in an Emergency. This is the same author as that? Same author, um, Ellen Scary. Elaine Scary. So, and Elaine Scary, she brings up some very good points. In Thinking in an Emergency, she actually talks about what it is for self defense, what it is for somebody who takes it upon themselves to defend their life, their family, their property, and goes into declarations of war nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, and several other things. So both books are very small. They're not a lot of pages. Um, thinking in an emergency is, let's see if it tells me how many pages this is. Oh, thinking when you say nuclear war, like literally like some practice. Nuclear war, government using oh. nuclear weapons is a way of attacking and things like that and stuff like that. So thinking an emergency is 176 pages. And the rule of law, it's a the rule of law, misrule of man is a small book, um, meaning it's dimensionally, it's not big. And that one's 191 pages. Both of these books are easy to read, should be easy to read um, and have valuable information on what an individual can do to base their conversations with politicians and some of the other items when it comes in discussing human rights with those who wish to restrict the means to have self-determination via self-defense. Is it... I don't know. Just if you don't mind, is it because you're because you're going to get strategies or tools to counter them or to be able to speak their language? Both. Okay. You will get tools on how to address some of their concerns and their fears and realize that, wait a minute, the laws that are being pushed are not the laws that should be pushed, that these laws have been used to violate the human rights and violate um, um, men's rights. And when I'm saying men's rights, I'm meaning humanity's rights. 
that's under the first one. And then the second one is how an individual, how a family, how a community, how a city, the county, the state, and then a nation responds in an emergency and how you think and how the entire processes are with the response of an emergency. And, but like in a, in a theoretical perfect world, not like in some kind of future. They have, they have like, real world examples. But I mean like, okay, so it's not, but it's not like some sort of like fiction, doom, you know. I'll, no, I'll these are, these are nonfiction. All the books that I have recommended are nonfiction. Okay. These are nonfiction books. Um, and workbooks or to practically think about this, not fiction or whatever. Correct. These that. are not, these are not books. Now you get somebody like me. I read for pleasure. I read everything for pleasure from politics to economics, to string theory, to physics, um, to memoirs of Russian generals recently. Um, so there are a lot of things that I will read because I love reading. And which is why the diagnosis that I had was so devastating. Um, and with that, knowing the books that can empower you, the same thing for the origin and the text and the meaning of the origin text, the origin meaning and the text of the 14th Amendment, same thing. Very, very, very powerful because it shows how they break, Randy Barnett and the other author break down how the authors of the Civil Rights Act of 19, no, of 1864, 1868, as well as the individuals who wrote the 13th and then the 14th Amendment were thinking, because it's all documented within their letters, within their speeches, within the federal record of stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that go along with it. Books like these give you the critical thinking capability and expansion to counter on the fly arguments from the anti-human rights uh, gun control groups. I dig it. So uh, appreciate it. I mean, I could, I'm trying to stop myself from extrapolating or you know, going on about that. So, um, yeah, let's end it here because I'm looking, it's four hours and I know you didn't jump in right at the beginning, but I don't want to, even though, again, I, I appreciate you've got the time and interest to talk about it. Um, I don't want to abuse that that opportunity. No, so. it's not a problem. If you want to go longer tonight because I was late, not a problem. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Um, so th this is a good time to chop it because then I could chop in the two, two, into two, two hours perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure because I've been experimenting with just dropping the, data bits or something down and it uh you know you move the gigabittles around and then you can get a two hour audio into the 100 megabytes that the mm -hmm. podcast is like yeah. by just reducing quality and it still sounds fine to me so i'm curious if people are listening to this and you know four hours is too big a chunk because your player doesn't like it or you'd rather have it in four one hours i don't care it's just clicking buttons on my end but I'm just thinking so that it's not too much. I mean, there I'm sure there are people that would like to hear conversations about 2A all night long, and I'm down for doing it. All you got to do is head over. If I had probably, I'm just going to say 500 to 700, 1,000 Patreons throwing a cup of coffee at me, I'm up all night doing this. I mean, not just because of the cup of coffee, but that would be enough to cover the kind of bills it would take to do that, and I'd be down. So uh, it's not necessary, but it's certainly on the table. If you've enjoyed this conversation, long format, um, I'm not going to be able to get people on to have long conversations each night, but I'm sure we can have people on to participate in segments and have some actual, I think I wouldn't be doing it just to do it. That would give us the opportunity to actually have some work get accomplished. And I think we did that tonight. You know, we had a bit of a creative um, workshop type of approach to it and just kind of went so I appreciate uh, you sharing. Thanks for coming on and, and offering this. I have made notes. I guess I'm not screen sharing here, but it says, I guess I don't know how to tell. Oh, select all. 
Um, I still don't know how to tell make it tell me. I'm just using Word, so it's I don't know how to make it tell me how many words I'm using. But I did take quite a bit of notes. They'll be in the description of this video. And then my goal, and we've talked about this before, is to eventually have some sort of resource. And we'll just post it somewhere or give it to one of the organizations or have it spread around just to give people some idea of the synopsis of what we were talking about, the summary of what we are kind of talking about today. I'd like to do something. Here's some basic directions. And then once you get a taste of it, you can figure it out. Nobody's, it's not rocket science, but to give people a basic roadmap, maybe uh, some basic steps and then uh, some phone numbers or websites or whatever they need to uh, get help. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Right on. So again, uh, thanks for showing up in, and uh, do you have an Instagram? I'll drop a link to that. People are free, invited and free to follow that. You have a sub stack. Is that active? I, it's sort of active. I need to make it active again. Um, so I will look at getting that active so that people can um, subscribe to it. It's been, to be very honest, it's been close to a year since I've done anything on it. Um, and the, one of the last things was just dealing with, and to be very honest, it was dealing with a uh, um, cousin's of, cousin of mine suicide. And that's one of the reasons why I took a break last year a little bit. And uh, let's see if I can find my stuff. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can find my sub stack. And I also have a locals account. I have just not done anything on it as of yet. Um, I need to. But a lot of the stuff did get stopped when I pulled out of doing a lot of the activism. So I'm making a decision on some of this of how much do I want to put into this? How much I need to be able to get items done on it. So I will be using, and I'm still on Twitter. Um, I use Twitter quite a bit because uh, I like being obnoxious sometimes. And I will go after people on Twitter. I am not a nice person on Twitter at all. Um, so I'm not, I don't really use Twitter too much. I it's just different than the one I'm used to and what I'm looking for out of stuff. So, you know, get the, the back and forth is, is part of the Twitter experience for sure. Yeah. So when, when someone is following someone else on Twitter and then the first person who's being followed, they do something like, say something and reply to something that's funny or sarcastic or you know good or jab or whatever does do the followers automatically see that or does the person who's being followed have to take a screenshot and initiate everyone like look what i said no they'll see it if if you're well if twitter's not playing with the algorithm people will anybody who follows you will see anything that you state as long as that that account that you are replying to or quote tweeting or quoting or something like that is not private. Um, if it's a private okay. account. So when we see people on Instagram posting somebody's Twitter, it's not like somebody was like, hey, there, like, uh, how about that? Like, touche. And then was like, ha, 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 I said such a witty thing. I'm going to take a screenshot of my own thing and then send it around. That's not what's happening. Instead, somebody said, oh, look what somebody replied to somebody. I'm going to share that. And then this third party said, I observed it because that's how Twitter works. Yes. I got to show the people on Instagram this. I always and there are times that I will post stuff on Instagram that I've said on Twitter, especially when it comes to 2A stuff and dealing with the antis and dealing with politicians. It is a way to boost the signal to expose the individuals who are pushing gun control. So there are, and we can actually discuss this as part we'll of the have, advanced we'll have whole discussions. On yeah, this, so. this is a whole using social media for two A work is starting to get into more of the advanced discussion that I know you want to go into. Yeah, that we'll do next time. Yeah, for sure. And that'll be definitely into the next time. And this is using, and there are some algorithms and some algorithm breaking methods to use to get messages out. And I have details from this last legislative session in how I use multiple cross platforms to drive the narrative of what was going on to engage people to have them participate during the legislative session. There are a lot of ways of dealing with this. There are a lot of ways to address it. 
And but this is getting into more of the advance of how to do something and why items are done a specific way as compared to just using Facebook and using what you use on Facebook is not going to work on Twitter or on Substack or things like that. And how you cross-referencing links through multiple platforms, whether it's YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Bastion, um, Twitter, Instagram, um, Mastodon, uh, Truth Social, Parler still exists, and Gab, as well as Instagram and TikTok. Those are your major social media platforms. If somebody is wanting to truly get involved into two-way advocacy, knowing how to use what you can do best to get your message out is critical. Yeah, and that's just a list. I mean, obviously, it's like saying a bunch of channels on cable. You don't have to use all of them by any means, but mm -hmm. that means there's an array of flavors. You can find the one that you dig or that does the like. I like Instagram because I can use it on the phone. It's fast and whatever. Mm -hmm. People aren't wasting my time. There's not a lot of that back and forth. It's more like, oh, that's cool. And that's about it. Like, you know, yeah. there's not, or like, hey, how'd you get that? Or, you know, there's not too much back and forth. It's mostly just looking at stuff and sharing interesting ideas um, or getting things across. Um, yeah. but anyway, so like I say, it depends on how people use it. If you're at work and you're back and forth between something, you may definitely dig the cadence or the, the way that some platform works. If you're, uh, you know, at home only every two weeks cause you're on the oil platform or something, then you may enjoy another platform that's much in pace or whatever, like a sub stack. When you've mentioned yeah. the sub stack, I just want to mention that one too. It's I've been digging it since you've mentioned it. I tried it. A couple other people have talked about it before, so that made me uh, try it. And it's just a place to write stuff. And mm -hmm. so if you're already doing stuff, like the description of your YouTube video, for example, if you already wrote something, you can put it over there. It doesn't have to be like a work of art. But what it does is it creates an archive of the things you've done. And then you've got metrics over there. So unlike almost any of them, you actually get some interesting metrics that let you see what people are interested in, like once mm -hmm. you've created some stuff and you put like, let's say you got a hundred articles. At some point you're going to be interested in what articles are people interested in. I've got a hundred of them. Well, it'll help tell you which, which are the ones and when and why. So that's kind of interesting. And just as platforms go, uh, but it's uh, also, I guess I was going to say that you can go back and look at, you don't have to think of like Instagram or YouTube. You think of like, what are you doing for me lately? Like what's today's, what's tomorrow's video going to be? Well, right. it's, if Substack is, look what we've done, look what's in the list. So you can go over there and maybe search or just kind of randomly browse through the articles. Okay, I've seen their their table of contents, so to speak. So you may not look at every single thing or read every single thing, but now you know what they've talked about over the last couple of years because you've scrolled through their uh, titles. Yeah. Well, now, six months from now, somebody says something about what's not, what this and that and the other thing, and you're like, oh, you know what? I've seen that on Substack before. Let me go grab the research because I know this person over there probably spent some time doing research on this. So what we create on Substack or what people have created on Substack is a giant library slash archive of like data that isn't dependent on what's critic, what's the news today. And right. sometimes it's good for like historical perspective or, you know, oh, this is what's happening today. Let me go look on Substack. Oh, snap. This happens every 18 months on frequent, on regular. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with it and this and some of these platforms may require more targeted specific conversations, but one of the things that you get and, and how to use this and everything else is learn what these different uh, platforms are because these platforms, whether it's Minds, whether it is um, uh, Substack, whether it is, uh, what's what I'm thinking of? Um, uh, oh. Pardon? The locals one again. Yeah, the locals, things like that. Having that information and being able to get information out also means that you can engage with, with very, very specific people. And how you engage with those individuals is going to be dependent upon the the level of involvement that you want to be. One of the things that I will say, no matter what, when you're doing some of this stuff, is make sure that you are taking time for yourself 
no matter what hard time and i apologize this was one of the reasons why i was late today is one of the things that i do on the weekend is i will not be as active on social media as well as much as um uh i am during the week specifically this is to protect the time that i have with my husband and I will go offline, technically, is for what we call it, at least every 36 to 72 hours. People can still reach me, everything else, but I am not being active uh, as much as I will be on other times. That's protect my own time. It's protect my own sanity. And I suggest everybody do that. Don't let social media take over your life, no matter what. Well, and you can't it'd be, I mean, it's just practical, right? Like you can't exercise every day. You need to have a muscles rest and you don't want to mm -hmm. just have some kind of weird cycle. Cause then you can't ever compete cause you're you've got some kind of weird cycle you're in. Right. So you want to yeah. disrupt every once in a while just to be able to adapt. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think there's something there. But I think also in the big scheme of things, we suffer when we sit around observing a few accomplish, mm -hmm. right? We're better off when we've created a, I'm going to keep, I'm going to start calling it hack. You know, when we've created yeah. a system, a mechanism that we can all collaborate on and be part of the same way that uh, the new technologies are happening that decentralize and stuff that let you know, but there'd be all kinds of ways to participate in that, but we'd be better off once we come up with ways that we don't require individuals as part of the win, but mm -hmm. instead the individual contribu contributions, and there's all kinds of ways to accomplish that through effort and tech. But yeah, so that's, I think that's an awesome thing. Like you wouldn't, even something you enjoy, you want to stop every once in a while so you remember why you enjoy it, right? Like, yes. oh, I eating chocolate for dessert every once in a while eat a horrible strawberry dessert so that you remember <laughs> how awesome chocolate is right yeah or just like or save it for or allow yourself to be in a circumstance where the chocolate might not be there like I, i'll only go to this restaurant because they'll never run out of chocolate we'll go to the other restaurant once in a while mm -hmm. you live on the edge maybe you have to have a strawberry dessert yeah it's a great way of dealing with it so and, and this is the thing, and don't ever let social media arguments, especially within the two way, it can get bitter. If some uh, with the women and things like that, my original public account, I would get rape threats, I would get strangulation threats, things like that. Don't let it become personal. Don't let it affect your personal life. Um, and that's even with the advocacy. Know when to pull back. Know when to as you build up the, within the community and things like that, you will know who you can tag as in a relay race, hand the baton off to for a while. Take the time, enjoy your life, and make sure that you have the ability to be there because as long as you are healthy, that is key to being able to be the best advocate if that's what you want to do. Okay, this time I'm definitely ending it. So that we can end it. <clears throat> I'm going to throw a commercial at the end. So again, thanks to 148 something Patreons. They make it possible for us to do what we do. Uh, for me to do what I do. And thanks, Sharon. I don't know how you're able to do it. Thanks for you just to be self-motivated to do all this on top of a 9 to 5. I try to do what I do. And then squeeze out selling some stuff on a store, but you do a real nine to five. Yes, I do. Stuff. I work a full forty hour week. I am on call every so many weeks on a on an on call rotation. Um, I have my partner, my my our Halloween will be our one year anniversary, but we've been together for um, fifteen years. Um, I do a lot of stuff outside of two A. And whether it is reading my other hobbies that I did even beforehand, um, keeping in touch with family, things like that. There are a lot of other things that I do. 
even with my work with the chapters from Pink Pistols and then also from Naga, Rainier Red Hills, that was all volunteer. That was all volunteer work. And I was honored to do it because to me, it was giving back to the community and being able to support those who were not able to have the time to be able to give it out because time is our most valuable resource. And it got it done. So that's what's awesome. And then I always like to let people know because a lot of times you don't think about it, but everything gets done in 2022, basically, or at least adjacent to 2022 now, which means, you know, we're talking about kids that can pay attention to everything else that's going on and their phones or whatever. So y'all are doing this. And uh, how did I say this before? Uh, <laughs> the same way that uh, uh, we lived in a time where there was telephones connected to the wall, and then we eventually got to cordless phones. We thought that was so cool. And then we got phones in our cars. Are you kidding me? And then you could walk around with a phone, and then you could do stuff on your phone, like text people, and then you could do the internet on your phone. What? Now everything is on the phones. And I guess like a, I end that with, and then the adults that vote in national elections, right? They've lived their entire lives with smartphones and they now live an entire life where there's female role models who have done stuff like 2A and the DC project, all the stuff that you've accomplished and not just the female side, just as advocates. We've got advocates out there where before we had a couple of individuals that ran organizations. Mm -hmm. So now we've got since 2015 an explosion but in modern our modern times we've had so many role models so we have a future that's so bright a future that's so it's going to have such growth because they're standing on the shoulders of a whole bunch of great people so the fact that you uh said that you did all that as volunteer you did it but you also inspired so i appreciate you having accomplished but then you know what you've left behind too like the planting is You've, you've planted that garden, but then you've instructed so many people on how to plant. There's no way to measure that. So I always yeah. like to. And reflect. that's one of the things is, and I've actually heard from people from other parts of the world and other parts of the country um, who have made comments that you don't know who I am, but you've given me the courage to speak out. And whatever it is on speaking out, the fact that they have the courage to speak out, and this is the whole thing, learning to speak out for the first time on something you believe on if you are not an extrovert is going to be one of the most scariest things you will ever do for the first time i'm gonna leave it on that i'm now <laughs> gonna actually follow through on my thing i'm gonna play a commercial and we'll, we'll end it commercial for our store by the way so if you want to buy something feel free GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com. Tonight's episode, Photo Finish. let us know what you think we'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video over on gunstreamer.com or on guntube.org thank you for supporting our projects if you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee check out our patreon channel the guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourages you to take a ccw class every year practice at least once a month and carry every day thank you for watching gunwebsites.com